Good morning and welcome to the Modus Super Series. As Group A spices up, today is the day where two becomes one, where we're going to find out our first qualifier for Saturday night. We have two players locked on 16 points at the summit, and this was the tear of the tape on Tuesday. Later, Bennett picked up just a couple of points on day two. He'll be looking to play himself into some form on the final day of Group A. Anton Osland is looking to find more consistency in his game. The three picked up just a solitary victory on his second day's action. It was much improved for Mindy, the Lithuanian qualifier, up to his levels of performance. There was also some miracles in there. Benjamin Duruz had a role reversal day compared to Monday, but a couple of wins gives him an outside chance of winning the group. But it is a two-way tie at the top of the table. Conor Hinehan is the man at the summit. He's level on 16 points. Maurice Riffin, who went through the card on day two, a perfect day means he set himself up to go on and claim a Saturday night place. Yeah, Reese Lightning was burning up the live lounge. That is for fo uh, that is for sure. I wouldn't quite call Paul Nicholson one of the uh, the T-birds from Greece, but oh. <laughs> a very good morning to you. Thanks. What a day it was yesterday. Yeah, it was good fun, wasn't it? It was interesting to see the development of the players. Uh, five debutants, uh, debutants on Monday, but to see some of them regress a little bit statistically and one person in particular starting to thrive a little bit more in Rhys Griffin. It was great to see because uh, we think with his technique, he's got a really great future. And Rhys Griffin's kind of a great example of what the Super Series is all about. A player who we haven't seen so much in recent times, getting back into it again, qualified courtesy of the ADC and is flourishing on that stage in the environment that he's been given. Yeah, it just goes to show, doesn't it, that when you've got talent at a very young age, it doesn't have to blossom into a pro to a product within a couple of years. You are going to have ups and downs, and Leighton Bennett can learn from this because Reese, at a very young age, was seen as a, a big superstar in the making. Uh, things happen in life, and you know things aren't easy when you get to the age of, say, 21, 22. But now that he is 26 years of age, I think... Based on the interview he gave to you on Monday, he's ready to start moving forward. And over the last couple of days, we've seen evidence of that. He most certainly has. Right, this is the table then at the two first points of Group A. Hinahan and Griffin both locked on 16 points. Hinahan heading the table by a solitary leg on leg stiffness. That was because of a 4 0 victory at the end of the day yesterday against Leighton Bennett. And importantly, Connie Hinahan and Reese Griffin are both facing off in their first match. Yeah, it's going to make it a really interesting day because. Ordinarily, when the two at the top play each other late in the session, we think that that might be some sort of playoff to get through to Saturday night, but it's not going to be the case today. Is it going to give us some sort of indication as to who's going to go through? Actually, no, it's not, because the person who wins that match might actually go on to see their day uh, pan out differently. So I think it's going to be a really interesting Wednesday to see how the five matches materialise for those two. And it'll make it even more interesting now when we have a look at the outright betting for the day because this really could change and swing on a pinhead. Obviously, only three players in that mathematical mix. Conor Hinehan at 1-2. to two. Reese Griffin, 13-8. to eight. Benjamin Jolot-Rose at 14-1. to one. Does standard logic dictate that with two players locked on 16 points, you kind of go with the player on the outside? Sometimes. I think the way that Reese played yesterday, I think the value there at 13-8 to eight is, is evident. But it's really weird that those two are going to be shouldering the pressure overnight. And in a funny sort of way, we've been waiting for somebody for months and months and months to win a Group A from a position of weakness. So don't underestimate Benjamin just yet, because if he gets two wins out of two, and let's say one win from two in the first two runs for the others, then things might just get very sticky. He's in that kind of situation where he's, he's looking one way in the fact that he could win the group but obviously doesn't then want to overlook that and then not to look too far behind his shoulder yeah it's a bit of a strange situation that the Dane finds himself in because the thing is if if he really wants to shoot for group a he's gonna to have to win all five games everybody knows that but 
in a funny sort of way, if, if he looks at it too defensively, he could find himself in fifth position uh, at the end of the day and find himself in Group C playing over the next couple of afternoons. It's going to be an up and down day. So what that old analogy, one bird in the hand and two in the bush or whatever, exactly, yeah. whatever they say. Right, let's get to the bet builder then for Wednesday's action at the Super Series. Now, Japan's just under 4-1 to one today. Now, we're expecting the game between Rhys Griffin and Connie Heenahan to go tight, and so do you at home. You're expecting that to go over five and a half legs at 1-2. to two. Rhys Griffin in the handicap betting against Leighton Bennett to win 4-2 or better, under 1.5 legs at even money. And then Connie Heenahan minus 1.5 against Mindauskas Borowskas, 4-2 or better at 8 to 13. Thoughts on them? Yeah, the bottom one, I'm not so sure about that one because I was quite impressed with Borowskis yesterday. I think if anybody was going to be really cheerful about how they turned up on Tuesday, aside from Rhys Griffin, I think Mendaugas has got every right to feel good. I think that one is just a little bit 50-50 for me, maybe even a little bit more towards the not going to happen. But I do believe that that third game of the day is going to go long. I think that will be at least six legs. Our first game of the day is going to see Benjamin Drouros in action up against Anton Osland. We've seen patches from Anton over the last couple of days, but consistency is probably the one thing now he needs to find. I think he, he can be quite aggrieved that he's in fifth position in the table. I think he's played really well. His statistics tell us a, a, a very bright story. And I just get the feeling that he could be one of those players who really blossoms by the end of the week. I expect to see him on Saturday. And just finally, conditions here. It's a very warm day in Ports. So how much is going to be the bits you do off the hockey as important as the bits you do on the hockey? It's going to be really important. It is fairly sticky here today, so you're going to have to be OK with the heat. And when you've got a lot of Scandinavian players here who are not used to the heat, then we're going to find out what they can do with it. But well, the heat is on at the end of Group A, that is for sure. And that's just up here on the balcony. That's just your shirt as well. <laughs> Dennis Ovens, eat your heart out. <laughs> right, let's get into the action then. It gets underway with Anton Oslo against Benjamin Dorus and joining Paul Nicholson in the country box. It's a very good morning to Chris Mason. Morning, Henry. Good morning, everybody. And, well, sit tight, because today could be a little bit of a cracker. These two meeting for the third time this week. The scoreline on Monday and Tuesday, an identical one. 4-2 in favour of Benjamin. And I'm with Nico. I think Anton will feel a little hard done by so far this week. But this man, Benjamin, well in the mix on 12 first leg, points. Anton to throw first. <clears throat> Game on. For me, I think he will have to go through the card. One hundred. The fundamental fundamentals of Anton's throw is very, very sweet indeed. Sixty. Well, I don't think he's done himself justice so far with just three wins in ten games. I think he's a far, far better player than that. 93. What say you, Mr. Nicholson? I have to agree, Mace. I think Anton can feel pretty good about the way he's played. But not about the amount of wins that he's got. But I think there's enough evidence to suggest that we have found a player that if we keep close tabs on over the next couple of days or indeed the next few months... I think next year could be a, a really big year for him. I agree. I just think everything there, the, the game's been there this week, but the the results haven't. And I think he, he's a kind of player who have gained so much from this experience and may use this as a springboard, 55. as you say, to, to really go forward. And I'm with you. I wouldn't be shocked one iota to see him here on Saturday night, on the finals night. It's good to see that Benjamin is not on fire today. And on your core, 121. <laughs> well, he will be because he's scorching. Yeah. <laughs> double 14 for the first double leg. Double what a great start double from double Anton, double. who's put in a couple of really big finishes this week of 161 and like 144. But they were Game to off. save matches, not to start matches. That's a great start from the Swede. Backing up what we've been saying and well you, you've had a good crunch of the numbers and well he's a little better than those 43. above him and
Here's what's weird about collating averages every morning. It throws up 140 situations that to you don't make sense. But this is a very intangible sport. 25. And when you look at the fact that Ostland for the week, that's the Monday and Tuesday put together, he's averaging 85.52. That's the second best. 85. And he's only got three wins. <laughs> exactly. Try and make sense of that if you can't. And it's not as if he had a good day Monday and a bad day yesterday. Actually, 58. it's fairly even. He was 84.62 yesterday, so he didn't drop off that much. I just get the feeling that certain 63. players have had the timing against him, including Benjamin, who has won both their fixtures this week. Yeah, 4-2, same scoreline. Just the one break of throw. If he goes into Group C, which, let's face 63. it, looks like that's going to happen. Benjamin, you require 170. I think he's going to cause problems for the people in Group C. I agree. Congratulations to Gerwin Price, who picked up a, a third title in as many weeks. Winning Players' Championship 41 21 yesterday. Benjamin Yohar, 89. Beating a well, unexpected finalist, Nico. Kevin Doetz, wasn't it, in the final? Game oh, shot the second well, line. Benjamin threw a really lovely conversion there from Benjamin. Double so far. Absolutely Early perfect. To throw first. Yeah, yesterday, Price beating Daniel Closer. It That's was it. Kevin Dutz the day before. Yeah. But I just want to have a Who little bit of a want? comparison between Anton and Daniel Closer. Mm -hmm. Because just under a year ago, Daniel was here. He won Group A and he had a really good time of it. He went sightseeing on Thursday and Friday, which we all thought was quite funny. And then he came back on Saturday night. He didn't win, but he played pretty 58. well. 58. You could have one campaign here and it could set you on the path to something else. That could be the case for any player 63. in this group. Benjamin, you're as far as Benjamin is concerned, 16. I would say that a lot of people, including people on social media, would categorise yesterday as a bit, a bit frustrating. Let's what? put it well, that way. It, very similar to his opponent here, Anton. He just didn't. He played okay. Didn't get any results. The first three games went down by the odd leg, didn't he? I'm going to 60. get something out of the way Benjamin at the middle part of this game. Actually, let's talk about it in the next leg. Let's give him a chance to get a 2-1 lead. Because something happened yesterday that I've never written down before. I am a bit of a, a scriber in the morning, writing down all sorts of bits and bobs. So when you do it as much as we do, we, we tend to pick up on things that 58. have never happened before. Benjamin, you're and passions. 58. Indeed. Double top. First missed start at a double. Game shot the third. Missed the second Benjamin one. Two Lewis. from three, averaging 94. Impressive start to the day, and he has been such a fine Benjamin. Benjamin to throw first. Game on. Now, I want everybody at home tuning in today to think about how many darts at double you would expect to get if you were playing five, five games of best of seven darts. Just do a mental calculation. Let, let's say you want to hit four shots and essentially every player here wants to get get it done in about 11 darts. 43. So over five matches, that's 55 darts at double. That would be a very decent day of doubling. Add on another couple to that and you think, well, 76. yeah, okay, maybe 30% is fine. But yesterday... Benjamin had 77 darts at a double. And I was talking on Monday to you, Chris, about how Reese Griffin had 61, and I thought that was a lot. He had 16 more yesterday. 85. 
tells me he is creating opportunities. And if the exactly what we said about Reese on Monday, that if he gets his doubling together on the Tuesday, he will 96. make serious strides in the table. Well, he did that yesterday, Reese Griffin, because he won five from five and was player of the day. On that note, is that what Benjamin has to do today to stand any chance of winning this group? Yeah, I, I, when you were talking with Henry, I, I'm, I'm not put him out of it. Wins this opening game. 100. He goes within two of two. Well, those two are playing in match number three, and only one of them is going to move on to 18 points. So, 100. And on your then he has to play that person anyway. I wouldn't be shocked. Nothing shocks me in darts anymore. Eight Not even that. that. <laughs> oh, a 1-2-1 one, one, and a 1-3-8 in this game for 2-2. Two, two. Benjamin's got every right to scratch his head. Fifth leg, Anton, to Superb Sorofa. finish from the Swede. Game on. Two superb finishes. Well, that was a beauty. Had five darts at a double in this match. Four have been hit. I think they're sending a really strong message to the practice room, well, especially to the likes of Griffin and Heenahan as to what they're going to have to do today. Finishes of 58, 89, 121, and 138. 100. We've got a couple of birthdays today that I'd like to shout 82. out. One to a very old friend of mine, Tony Fleet from Australia. <laughs> Good fella, Tony. Likes a shandy. Easy. And uh, another very large character in darting terms, Vinand Havenga of South Africa. Yeah. It's on your choir, 124. Yeah, remember him. Chevrolet 18 for another one. I decided not to. Sometimes when you can get on a roll with finishes like that, you might think, well, I fancy another one. 52. But going for the bullseye on dot two, I'm not sure about that one. No. Well, I suppose then if he hits at least a 25, 57. he can go 19 to leave 60. That's, That's true. 72. I'm just trying to. Make sense of it. Would you rather have 59 or 60? Game 59. The fifth leg and I'd rather be 3 2 up. <laughs> but it, it brings up an interesting talking point, actually, because on that 1 2 4, 20 leaves 104. Six leg Benjamin to 25 Game on. leaves 79. So then you go. You can't go trouble 13 because you leave 66. Yeah. That's 57 leaves 22. I don't like it. Interesting. It's really interesting because you get the 19. Then you leave 60. Whereas with his 81. angle of attack, you've got a dart in the way of single and tops. So I think you're better off using the 25 at the end if indeed you need it. Because, so I think a 104 with two darts, you're better off going 60 instead of the 25. I agree. I'd keep it simple. Straight ton to leave double 12. Do we... Say bye bye Benjamin for Group A if yeah. Oslin gets one more leg then. Yeah. I think he need I think he needed to do what Reese did yesterday and go through the card. When I said bye bye Benjamin there, I got a <laughs> a real Bay City Rollers yeah. sort bye of bye flashback baby. there. Yeah. <laughs> Forty one. Get me scarf out. And check out pants. They wear dungarees as well. They did. Yeah. 95. Did you see Henry in a pair of dungarees? And that shirt. I thought BHS was closed. That's where Dennis used to get all of his shirts 59. from. He told me himself. Benjamin, you require 70. Lovely 54. It's double eight. It's in. I promise you, it's in. Is this? He had so much trouble on this yesterday. 62. Outside wire, inside wire. 
Well, it doesn't look like it's going to go the 4 2 scoreline like their previous two meetings. 60. Benjamin, you're Anton, eight. Anton, I just want to win the next leg with the throw. Game That's a lovely shot. We are going Rose. all the way in our first match of Wednesday. Tight matches do not do Benjamin any favours because his leg difference is a good eight Game legs up. behind that of Rhys Griffin, nine behind Heenahan. First and foremost, early in the campaign, if he is going to be involved in a tight match, just get the points. But a little bit later 59. on, if he's still in the race, he's going to have to win by distances. I always remember watching athletics when I was younger 58. and being fascinated by the 800 and 1500 meter runners who would stay at the back of the pack. And I remember asking my parents, why do they do that? And they just looked at me and said, we don't know. 96. But later in life, I got to know some people who worked in the industry and they said it's advantageous to run behind somebody because you're in their slipstream. So you don't use up as much energy. Oh, running into the air. Exactly, they're cutting a hole in the air. Indeed. So then it made sense. And then you look at someone, and I use this example all the time. There was an 800 meter called Peter Elliott. 46. Who would be at the back and you think, well, he's got no chance. And then next thing you know, he's in lane four in the last 100 meters, sprinting like Usain Bolt. He was a master at it. I just wonder if... 139. Benjamin's going to do that today. Do a bit of a Femke Ball. Did you see that at the recent World Athletics Championship? In the, no, I was away. I didn't get to see any of it. In the, I think it might have been the 4x4 four four really, and she overtook two people in the last 50. It was ridiculous. Ninety-six. It was all looking so rosy for Anton, but he's going to be confined to the old Group C. 99. And possibly the next two darts. 68. Will he get a chance at that 120? 60. He will. He might be about Anthony to make the flying star fall. It's for his first win since his first game yesterday, where he won 4-0. 80. You can see where he was throwing it from, Benjamin all the way down to the right-hand side, and it just goes to show that he does have darts in the way of tops when he has got a dart in the single. Game Double one, shot. and, and it's a good Benjamin win for Drew Benjamin Drew Rios because he needs five from five to stand any chance of getting through this group today. As for Anton, it was a good performance, but unfortunately, finishes of 1-2-1 one, one, and 1-3, one, it weren't good enough. And indeed, he was three from four, which wasn't good enough. Stats telling us lies once again. Benjamin wins, and now we'll turn our attention to Mindaugas Barauskas against Leighton Bennett in game two.
Back to the Moda Super Series where before the break, Benjamin Drew Roos kept the flame of flickering with a 4-3 success against Anton Oslund. It means he now moves within two points of Conor Hinehan and Reese Griffin, who are going to meet in Game 3. Game 2 sees Mindauskas Borowskas take on Leighton Bennett. A win for the Lithuania will move him on to eight points. A win for Bennett would mean the three players at the bottom of the group will all be tied on six. Here's Chris, here's Paul. Thank you, Henry. Well, these two have had... A bit of a nightmare, a couple of days. I'm sure they expected so much more from a Group A campaign, especially the former World Youth Champion back in 2019. When he was just 13 years of age. Still only 17 is late. Bennett. Leighton to throw <clears throat> Going through a real game transitional off. period at the moment with his game. He's decided to stick with the yellow flights from yesterday. Yeah, I thought they went better. Oh, I, I already like what he's doing with the first three darts. He's not being too quick. Just a bit more rhythm to that. If he can maintain that, I think he might might see some results. Anyway, early we're going with that. <laughs> as far as the week is concerned, Bennett will not like his stats. And out of sheer respect for him, I'm not going to give you too many of them. But... 84. It's not like he's coming into Wednesday without victories. No, I mean, he had one against Baraskas on Monday. 60. And it was his best performance of the day. A 4-1 win with a 91 4 and 4 out of 7 on the doubles with a ton plus finish. So, yeah, I just... This is 60. much better. It's just softer and it's there's more control. And that's just a, a, a good base, a good foundation to to start the day on. 43. He's been watching Callan Rids. <clears throat> Darts fans will probably know that over the last few days, Callan Rids of Northumberland has won a title in the PDC and has visibly slowed down to be more methodical and more rhythmic. And it has paid enormous dividends for him in the last few days. 121. Leighton probably sees today as a free hit and a way to find out what to do for the rest of the week. Find out what works. 53. But already there's nothing erratic. I just think it's... Listen, we've all gone through spells 54. where we're having practice routines or he tries... And it works, for a, it works for a time, but ultimately you've... You've got to find something that you feel like you're in control. <clears throat> right down for the eights or the sixteens now. Oh, okay. Thirty-two. Oh, well thrown dart. Clips war, the wire. I didn't see that coming, but I can, I can get behind it. Yep. Well, it's a it's a conscious decision. It's maybe maybe this morning he's been doing some. Routines and 86. found that he was Late in your war, popping double 18 with regularity. It makes sense to me because we did talk yesterday that the right-hand side of the board might be kinder to his lie. Double nine. And that is a double that's plagued a lot of right-handers over the years. No score. Yeah, sure has. Does your war, 52. Double 16 for Mindy. Game shot on the first leg. He's Mindowskis starting today the assist. same way he started yesterday. Monday, as far as Mindy is concerned, <laughs> not Second a great Mindowskis deal to, first. to write home about when it comes to doubling, but he started brilliantly on the doubles on Tuesday, and he'd like to keep that going 60. today. Well, he went two from two, didn't he, to start the day, and that sort of confidence continued throughout the day. What happened with him is... Went through spells of just dropping off in terms of scoring. 97. <clears throat> 66. I said that line in the, the last leg. I, I was starting to quote the mamas and the papas, wasn't I? I felt like saying Monday, Monday, but it was Mindy <laughs> Monday. 96. I've enjoyed watching him this week. I think he's he's definitely got something. I know that down at six points in the table with 
Anton no, Osland. It hasn't been particularly fruitful points wise, but there are possibilities in the next couple of days for him. Group C is going to be Joe Croft, 60. Ryan Harrington, and David Vavazetsky. So whoever has got the David Mindy game 50. might want to do some vocal exercises going into that game. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Yeah, I, 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 I do it as Wazuski. I, I don't know. I, how many would it score on a Scrabble board? <laughs> I, I worked out once that Christoph in Polish is 37. There's two Zs in there. I need to get a life, don't I? <laughs> I was going to say, it must have been a slow day, Nico. Well, eight in your choir, 170. Well, this would make him feel good. Make us feel good, too. Shalimar, that wasn't it. I can make you feel good. That was a tune. Oh, that's really nice. Mendelsi's your wire, Double 18 again. 60 for the ball to deny him a shot. 92. Tidy Later from Mindy. 36. Well, he's fortunate to get a shot at double nine. Same happens again. 28. Mendelskis will require 36. Game shot on the second oh, leg. Mendelskis, two, two from two. One on 16s, one on 18s. And he looks untroubled. Third leg Leighton to throw first. Game on. They've won one game each in the last couple of days against each other. So this will be the decider for Group A. But they will play against each other 58. the next two afternoons as well. Like I say at this point, every single week, if they play each other a sixth or seventh time, 83. they'll be very, very pleased. Yeah, because it'll be in the final. <clears throat> Rouskis yesterday lifting 59. his daily average by a few points for the week. He's just the tiniest bit under 80. How much improvement is he going to have to find, do you think, to get to the top two spots in Group C? At least another five points. So from a percentage point, he's going to have to find about... 6%. Well, Bennett, who got four 180s yesterday, that's now his sixth of the week. He's got company in the 180 house. And whenever Leighton does something good, when you're he's having, right behind him. When you're having a bad week, doesn't it? Doesn't that always happen? More a bad game. 140. Mendoza's Backs the max 140. up with the 140. Oh, this would... This would be killer. Don't look, Leighton. Now you can look. 118. Well, Leighton, you require 64. You are curious. Most 180s this week so far come from the Dane. <coughs> He's got 16. Hey, at 10 yesterday. Yeah, really impressive. Double top. 24. Now, this is obviously an effort from Leighton to leave tops and 18s instead of double 16. Yeah. As you no said score. yesterday and picked up early on Monday, they lay Leighton across. 40. Double 16's a, a nightmare double. Double 10. Game on the third. Now you can Leighton see, Leighton even if he's outside that double, he's not going to block it. I think this plan is a good one. It worked for Sebastian Mignoska Bioetsky. Throw first. It may just Game pay off. small dividends for Leighton Bennett, albeit they're in very different positions. When we suggested that 60. from the commentary box for Sebastian, he was gunning for second position in the table and it, indeed first for a small amount of time on the Wednesday. No, Whereas this is a larger building process for Leighton. Easy for us to say. 100. Hard for Leighton to do, but he's just got to be patient. No one is anymore. 
Yeah, it's difficult to be patient in this modern world, isn't it? 57. Everything is so accessible. Everything is now. I like to use the example of when we were at school. 28. You're having a conversation with your friends. And you think of something that is on the tip of your tongue. You couldn't just pick up a device and search for the answer. Now, you would either persevere 59. with your thought process, or you'd have to go to a library. Do they still exist? They do. They're 79. great things now. They used to be great things anyway, but now they're few and far between, but when you find a good one, they're marvellous places. Thirty-nine. Advantage Borowskis here. I'm sure that he's had quite a few people watching from Lithuania the last couple of days. Forty-five. I wonder what they think of his efforts over the last 48 hours. I'm sure there are lots of people tuning in today on Sporty Stuff TV and the Motor Super Series YouTube channel eagerly awaiting match three between Rhys Griffin and Conor Heenahan. Whoever wins that match will go top of the table on points. 130. Sorry, 126. Mendelski's. <laughs> well, seen some big finishes already today. You are 120. Oh, 189 now. <laughs> Fifty-four needed for a shot of the ball. And that's where he's blocking that fifty-four. Can go ball. Ninety-eight. Oh. Mendelski's Draguar eighty-nine. Unlucky for some. Double thirteen. Well, again, he's leaving a shot in the in the right hand side of the board. 57. And he does get a look at it. A leading Draguar twenty-six. You left it. I always feel there's a bit less pressure on these more obscure doubles, but he split. 10 for double eight. 10. Mendelsky's your requirement. I would have 32. thought six. If you're going to split, six for double 10. Game well, that is a really nice Mendelsky's find from Spurs. Mindy, but why go 60 if you're not going to go for the double 13? Fifth leg, Leighton to throw I think from first. a game plan perspective, game on. that one needs a bit of thought. I know that double 13 is the second but, most neglected double on the board, but it's not in a bad position. No, and if you could, listen, you can Three attack nine. it and effectively burn the dart, or you've burnt the dart by splitting. Thirty-three. Apparently, Borowskis doesn't like the treble 20 anymore. He's gone for the 19s. Every now and again, it's it's not the worst thing to do to no, try and refresh. Reset. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised, actually, 98. that in Rob Cross's career, he hasn't started on the treble 18. He's so good at it. <laughs> yeah, Dennis Priestley-esque on the treble 18. He was at the Pro Tour events in Barnsley the last couple of days. I saw yeah. a lovely picture yesterday on social media. Him and James. James Wade yeah. and Dennis Priestley. What a wonderful picture that was. Yeah, I got to see Dennis, not at the match play this year, but the previous year. He looks so well. 58. Spending most of his time in Tenerife, probably. Yep. This is good from Borowskis. He's had a bad start to the leg, but he's recovered. So that's a 180 in the game and a 171 downstairs. You can say what you like about Bennett in this game. He is 3-1 down. He could well lose it 4-1. But from a first game perspective, this has been better than the last couple of days. 79. The only thing that's really been missing in this game are the doubles. One hit from 10. 96. He's going to get a look at the one three two, And he's going to have to go the bull route. Because it looks like Tops is going to be left by Mendogas. A wonderful approach. 
Well, Eden, you require 132. Full use of that treble 19 in this fifth leg. Well, that's actually not in the way. He would have had a pretty good sighter at the bullseye. Nine. Had he found the 57, but he doesn't. 40. So Mindy goes for eight points in the table shot. and gets and it. Mindos Ruthless Mindos on the doubles at points. And the Lithuanian wins, funnily enough, with an average in this game of 79.97, which is one hundredth of a point below his weekly average. Quite incredible. But the most important thing are points for him today as he tries to get up the table as far as he can. When we come back, it is that long-awaited battle between Rhys Griffin and Conor Heenahan. We've been waiting for quite a few hours for it. So let battle commence when we come back. Welcome back to the Motor Super Series. Uh, before the break, we saw Mindauskas Borowskas get the better of Leighton Bennett by four legs to one. This is the table then, and a big game ensuing now. As you can see, Conor Heenahan and Reese Griffin both on 16 points, and they go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the final match of the first round's worth of fixtures. It could be an important game, a game which sets up both players' days. And so let's get straight into the action then in the company of Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. Thank you, Henry. Yes, myself and Nico have been anticipating this one. They didn't have a good game yesterday. There was a little bit too much pressure on it, we felt. Maybe showed each other a little bit too much respect, but one win apiece this week. One for Reese on... Uh, sorry, Connor on Monday. One for Reese yesterday. 
Am I saying the name of his town right? Llan Prerach? Uh, I've been practicing that all morning. First I've got it wrong. I do apologize to everybody. We'll, we'll find out. There's Game plenty on. of Welsh speakers watching the action. And Welsh colours today for Reese. Bit of red and black. And let's face it, yesterday he was unbelievable. 57. In the first couple of games when it came to the finishing. Yeah. He was very pleased with that as well when he spoke to Henry at the end of the day. It Rightly did, so. It did tail off a little bit towards the end, but 100. he still ground out five wins from five, which has got him on 16 points with Heenahan now. But on the flip side of that, you've got to give Heenahan credit because he had to win his last game yesterday by four legs to nil just to retain that top spot, and he did. Yeah, he did against Leighton Bennett. 57. You know, decent enough performance. This could well set the tone for the day, whoever wins this one. 48. Because then, whoever does win this, it's in their hands, isn't it, of course? Indeed. And but in a funny sort of way as well, that they were probably hoping 60. that Anton was going to beat Benjamin in the first game so they could just make it a two-horse race. But now they're going to be peering over their shoulder a little bit because, albeit 96. with this game in hand for both of them, Benjamin's only two points behind. Could be a fascinating day. 140. Reese require 160. 160. Highest finish yesterday for Griffin, a 113. 80. Connery require 144. Heenan, a 157, which came at the end of his first game. The ideal time to hit a big out. 104. He's got Reasons pressure on Griffin 80. at the very start here. Two tens to take the first leg. 70. There Connor, the difference. You 40. Your opponent's on tops. You've got two darts at a double. Or are you going to pay the price? Game the he does so, Connor, he but in a slightly salty way. <laughs> Sometimes you wish that the player would just not see that. Second leg, Connor to throw first. Game off. Yeah, as a player, you sort of want to look over your shoulder and see that your opponents watch that go in and watch the grimace. And that was a break of throw, of 28. course, something that Connor needed to win the match. I just want to send a little bit of a congratulations out this morning as well, before we get too deep into this game, to Robert Owen, who is one of the winningest players here at the Moda Super Series. He's got five weekly titles. He's on the Pro Tour at the minute. He got a nine-dot leg yesterday. so And on the stream, which was yeah. lovely. So congratulations 45. to Robert for doing that. We go on to lose the next leg in the match, though. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Well, we had three, three in three days. Vincent, Luke Humphreys, and Robert, and Robert Owen. Owen. Well done, lads. Big day for the Pro Tour, guys. Trying to qualify for the World Series of Darts Finals and the last European Tour event of the year in Hildesheim, which is in the middle of October. Yes, it's first up will be the... 134. What order are they going to do them in, Nico? Do you know? I think they'll do the European Tour one first. That's usually how they do yeah. it. And then the World Series... 95. Qualifiers straight after. It's all about qualifying for Saturday here, though. And they know how they have to do it. As far as Heenahan is concerned, he's done it before. He's the one who's got the experience of getting to Saturday. Griffin is in new territory. World Series 96. finals. Gets, gets underway. A week on Friday. In Amsterdam. The AFAS Arena. We will be 90. there, Nico. Gonna go on 97. Double 19 or treble 18. 57. Interesting, and he Reese didn't use 64. the double double there. He might think he's coming back. Is he right? Double top. 44. Yesterday, they were going in. require 40. Especially in his first couple of games. 
A very similar conversion here in leg two. He misses the double at the top, but then gets the double in the four o'clock position. Yeah, now 2 0 Heenan. Reese yesterday went eight out of nine, didn't he? Four out of four in his first match, four out of four five in his second match. If you'd have said to me that. After those two games, he'd be 38% of the day. 135. I would have been shocked. Yeah, because he just sort of went missing on the outer ring in the back end of the session. 60. Although that coincided with him battling for a top spot, so. 140. Every game is different. Like I was saying with Henry at the top of the show, I think it's it's really interesting that we have this game first. It's how it was always going to plan out because the fixtures are done in advance of the week. We don't just play the first two days and then try and line things up. That's not how we do things here in Portsmouth. But whoever loses this game is going to be behind by two points, but the other person is going to shoulder the pressure. Of being the top spot. 91. Having said that, Heena has been there pretty much the whole week anyway. <laughs> yeah, pretty much from the early stages of Monday morning. 66. Double 12. Game this time he takes the chance, Griffin. and that's really good. Yeah, that'll make him feel a whole heap better. To throw for 14 darts it. 180 in the leg. Oh, there has been a bit of a pattern with Heenahan's play. Not just this week, but in previous qualification weeks as well. He does have this tendency 96. to have a, an enormous level. Really high. But towards the end of a session, he, he does tail off. 85. He's one of them kind of players that puts everything into every dart. Every dart is thrown with a purpose. Yeah, I agree with you. I think 96. there are certain players out there who throw with such laziness. And I mean that in the best possible way. I don't mean that as a derogatory term. But there are players who think every dart. And after three or four games, that will have an effect on be draining, your emotional it? state. Yeah, be draining. Mentally draining as well as physically. 99. But if he can go great guns in the first three rounds and win three games, and Reese was to lose, say, two 85. games from three, he'd almost have the job done. Connor's got Ostland in round 45. number two. Connor Griffin's got Borowskis, and he's already won. So. Things don't get any easier. But the last thing you want to be doing is leaving yourself bogey numbers. 47. When your opponent is ahead of you. 133 is the quest. 95. Has to settle for a little bit 60. less, but Heenahan now. Looking for 3 1. Game shot on the fourth Wonderful leg. shot. Hinehan. Bends it around the wall. Roberto Carlos style. And it's 3 1 to the Irishman, who is not Game only one. one leg ahead in leg difference in the table right now, but by playing Griffin here, 91. if he beats him, he reduces Reese's leg difference at the same time that he improves his own. Especially if he can convert 3-1 into 4-1. That will be huge. Especially later on if they finished on the same points. Well, it gives him a... It basically gives him a buffer. 97. What an era of football that was. Roberto Carlos. My goodness. He could take a free kick, couldn't he? Couldn't he just? I wouldn't want to be in that wall. His legs were almost as thick as his waist. You remember that free kick he took in France? Yep. 140. The shot heard around the world. I'm trying to think who was in goal. Was it Fabian Bartes? 
He was in goal for that. 130. That he was just looking at it go by as if to say, <laughs> that's got no right to go on the goal. <laughs> well, he, he could hear it, but couldn't see it, I think. 95. Connor Gregoire, 91. Oh, this is for the match. He's not going to go double double again. That's interesting. He's 41. playing this game straight down the line. He's not deviating from his game plan. And it's definitely a game plan. That's a beautiful first start. 54. He's had chances. Connor, you're required. Yeah, six 50. of them. And Connor's about to have his sixth dart at a double. And Game that's shot. the difference. And the match, Connor Heenahan. Because Connor Heenahan gets six darts at a double and hits four, whereas Reese Griffin gets six darts at a double and only hits the one. There wasn't a great deal between them in the averages. That is a really good, solid performance from your leader at the top of the table. But his buffer is now two points at the top, and his leg difference buffer is a good seven legs all of a sudden because of that 4-1 victory. Round one is in the books. We will chew the fat a little bit when we come back and figure out what happens in round two. A big game and a big win for Conor Heenahan as he gets the better of Reese Griffin by four legs to one after the break. Clinical on the doubles, four out of six compared to five misses on the outer ring for Reese Griffin. So this is what we've seen so far. Elsewhere, Mendelskis Borowska's got the better of Leighton Bennett by four legs to one. And Benjamin Dreros got the better of Anton Osland in a last leg decider. So this is the state of play as far as the table is concerned after the first round of fixtures on day three. Conor Heenahan then 
Two points ahead of Reese Griffin at the top of the table. Benjamin Duru is on 14. He's got a bit of a buffer between the three players in the Group C spots. Right, next up for us, it is Duru who can draw level on points with Reese Griffin. And he takes on Leighton Bennett. And um, watching this one in the commentary box. Let's hand down to Chris Mason and Paul Nicholson. Well, this is an interesting turn of events, isn't it? Because now, with Heenahan on top by two points and by seven legs, you think he's a huge favourite for the group. But we have got a little caveat to that. First leg, Benjamin, to Don't Thoreau you first. dare game on. discount this Danish player because if he wins this game by any margin... one hundred and thirty, He's going to draw a level with Rhys Griffin. However... If he wins by four legs to nil, he'll go second. Yep. And within 99. two points of Connor, and of course, they meet in four matches time. 96. You look at our schedule today. It gives us possibilities. Benjamin against Reese Griffin in game 15, you think oh, how much importance is going to be on 98. that game? 98. That is very much dependent on what Connor does. He's got Borowskis in his last game. 60. Heenahan has got Benjamin in the next round. That's very, very dependent on what happens with Heenahan and Ostland in the next 59. game. If you're a fan of cats being tossed into pigeons, then... You kind of want 96. Anton Ostland to beat Connor next because that would make this group fascinating all of a sudden. Oh, absolutely. 100. Benjamin, you require 100. One thing we can say is there's zero pressure on Leighton now. He can just go out and play and see how things materialize. Game but that is a brilliant Benjamin start. Morris. I think this is more like the Monday. Benjamin, as opposed like to Layton the Tuesday, to Benjamin. Game on. Yeah, stunning start. 15 darter. 1-1-4 one, one, out. Seen that a few times. 140. Do you want to do a little bit of on this darting day? Oh, we should, because, well, there's a fascinating one today, Nick. I was almost, almost a little bit shy to bring it up. Because I know it's a, a day that you want to forget. <laughs> oh, well, maybe a few years ago, not so. now. It's um, yeah, water under the bridge. Well, let, let's put it this way. 15 years ago, and if you walk up to somebody that you've known a very long time, 58. ask them, what were you doing 15 years ago today? Well, I first met Chris in 2008, I think it was, yep. at the Grand Slam. And it just so happened that that year... 96... We were both playing at the, uh, the Grand Slam at Darts in Wolverhampton. And two months before it, 18. on this day 15 years ago... We were a few miles apart. Indeed. <laughs> we were about 12,000 miles apart. I was winning a DPA event in a lovely Victorian town called Mildura where they get wonderful oranges and apples. You had that infamous day with Felix McBrady. <laughs> the cat. 96. Yeah, I was losing in the... The final of, I suppose, what would be classed as a pro tour nowadays. Yeah, Players' Championship 20 called the Ireland Autumn Classic. 100. That's an excellent name for a tournament, the Ireland Autumn Classic. Yeah, it was the day where I was mocking everyone losing to Felix, and then I went on to lose to him in the final. But we had absolutely no idea. 56. No, it was the same day, same year. Exactly. It just came up this morning on our database and we were having a bit of a chuckle about it. Hope you're well, Felix. 100. Who did you beat in the 56. final? My good friend Pee Wee Bottrell. Phil Bottrell played for Australia with him in the Trans-Tasman Test Matches. Great player from Broken Hill in New South Wales. 36. Benjamin, you require 87. If you're watching Pee Wee, been a long time, pal. Miss you. Bullseye for Ben. Oh, that's ben nice. Is and that's going to make Leighton feel a bit salty. Oh, it's happening again, isn't it? Third leg, Benjamin, to throw first. Game on. Dark break of throw, but a lovely ball finish. 
Anything else on this day, mate? Going back a bit or recent times? Yeah, some 16. good stuff here. A particularly good day in darting history for Trina Gulliver because she not only won the World Masters in 2009, she also won the World 59. Trophy in 2003. So two majors on this day for the great 10-time world champion who we're going to see tomorrow. We are. 140. I do believe Jamie Caven won his very first PDC title on this day in 2009 in the beautiful town of Salzburg in Austria, beating the great Steve Beaton 6-2 in the final. 52. I think I was at that tournament. That was a particularly 45. succulent Chinese that night with Jamie. I remember it well. Every now and again, Bennett just drags the dart to his left. I think it's gradually being extinguished in the scoring element, but we have seen a few darts go low and left, especially when he's going for low doubles on the board. We'll keep an eye on that over the next few games and indeed over the next couple of days. Ninety-five. Ends of the trouble to leave the finish. I've got one more for you when it comes to on this darting day, but I'm going to save it for like number four because it's Danish. Forty-six. Late in your choir, one hundred and nothing to do with early morning sugar-coated treats, by the way. Or bacon, which is okay okay at any time of the day. Yeah, that's true. 92. Benjamin He's taking out 114. And a lovely bullseye out as well. This would be a different level. 99. When he misses today, Breaking he's not missing by much. Tiny margins. He's doing everything to try and leave double 18. Yeah, it's, it's mathematically just not a good way to go because if you hit the single 14, you've got to stay there for ball. If you go to 54 for 24, you hit the 18, you've got 20 tops. Benjamin three out of three on the doubles for the day, and this is very tidy indeed. Fourth without being to throw first. ridiculously Amen. spectacular in the scoring phase. Now, one more thing on this starting day. We're going to go all the way back to 1992. And the Belgium Open that year, which was won in the ladies by Kitty van der Vleit, I believe that is the way you say the name, beat Dieter Hedman in the final. But the runner-up in that 61. tournament was a certain Per Scow. Winner of that tournament, Rodney Harrington. And his son is going to be with us for the next couple of days. 99. Lovely stuff, Nico. That must have been a huge shock. Dieter then losing in that final. Yeah, I think so. That was their first sort of run before taking a sabbatical. If only we had a little bit more information about some of those tournaments from back then. 96. We do have information about who won those tournaments, and I'm very grateful that we do. If only we knew who was in the semis and the quarters and the last 16 and things like that, we could dig super 140. deep. 140. One hundred forty there from Leighton. Benjamin, you require 160. I think he's. I think he's scored all right so far today. He's just not been able to find a double. 42. Late in your choir, one. I wonder which route he's going to use for 108 then. Because if he likes double 18, the 18s is probably the right one. Yeah, Shanghai and 18s. Is he just going 52. through a day of experimentation to try and find out what works? And if that's the case, I'm fully behind it. Agreed. This is the time to experiment. 94. Late in your choir, 56. So with 56, he's going to go for 16 in tops. Is he going to keep the match alive? 
36. Maybe Item not. Item require 24. Hasn't missed a double. Game shot. Doesn't miss a, a double. Match. Benjamin Drury. Not the first time we've seen four out of four from someone, but that is a huge result for the Flying Star because now he goes to 16 points and because he's won 4-0, he's second in the table. So don't rule him out yet. 87.13 the average and 100% on the doubles. That'll get it done most of the time here in Group A. When we come back, Conor Heenahan looks to get that distance again away from the Dane because now he's got two people chasing him. Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team off the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up and the action gets underway from 7.30pm. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon.
Well, that was destructive from Drew Roos. Benjamin getting the better of Leighton Bennett by four legs to nil. Four out of four on the doubles in the process. And so he just keeps himself with a bit of an outside chance of qualification. Next up for us, Connie Heenahan in action. He won that crucial game against Reese Griffin in game three, which means he can move himself onto 20 points if he can get the better of Anton Osland here. I'm watching this one. Chris and Paul. Things are very interesting now, aren't they? Because Conor Heenahan is looking over his shoulder a little bit, but it's still in his hands. It's a bit like having the football in your mitts. First leg, Conor, and then to throw first. You've got about 50 Game yards one. to cover to get the touchdown, but you've got a very fast cornerback trying to chase you down. Just how fast can Conor go? 140. At this stage of the day, Mace, he's got to be really quick and really effective. Yeah, I think he'd be very pleased with his opening match performance 59. in getting the better of his nearest, well, then nearest rival, Reese Griffin, averaged 92-44 in a 4-1 win. Four out of six on the doubles. It was tidy. It's fair to say that the Danish player Benjamin Drews is hoping that the Swede will do him a favour and Rhys Griffin is wearing his 45. Swedish shirt right now as well. That really would bunch things up, especially if Rhys Griffin was to beat Mendogas Barowskis in the next game. But even if Anton Ostland was to win this game and Rhys was to lose his next game, he'd still be in the mix. Yeah. Well, Benjamin and Reese will be very much cheering on Anton here. Seems to play his best stuff towards the beginning of a, a schedule, especially yesterday. He won 4 0 in his first game, then didn't win again the rest of the day. But in Monday's play, he seemed to find his best in rounds two and three. 53. Anton, you require 84. For an opening break. Double 12. Game shot of yep. leg. That'll work. Northland. One of yeah, my favourite channels on YouTube that actually, <laughs> that'll work. They do trick shots, including darts trick shots. Ooh. Second leg to to throw first. But there's no trick shots here. Game on. It's all about accuracy and poise. And he had plenty there with a 14 dart break of throw. 100. Connor tends to focus on Irish darts 29. and motor super series, doesn't he? He's not one to do a great deal of travelling to WDF events, but nope. he does play Challenge Tour as well. We can't forget about the fact that at the end of October, it's he who's going to be doing the chasing for the top two spots for tour cards. He's not out of it by 100. any means. He's sat in 10th, isn't he? Yep, 10th position on £4,850. £140. £125. Well, it was a 14 dart opening leg. Opportunity for an 11 here. Treble 10. No need to go 12 ball with Connor back on 2 full 7. 65. I do beg your pardon. I was looking at Conan Whitehead in 10th position. Connor's way down. Forget about what I just said. He's fully focused on what he wants to do here today. 140. Anton, you require 16. 2 0. Double 4. 12. That's been happening too often. We've been loading him a bit the last couple of days, seeing the potentials there, but he does miss a few doubles. Game and Connor, Connor does Connor not Hina. miss there. That's a classy finish. Oh, what a time to get a break back. He was Early potentially first. Game on. getting dominated. You know what I've picked up on as well when the players have been 100. speaking to Henry at the end of the day? Because it doesn't happen every week. You might think that players come here and they've got their monitor in the 
in the practice room, which gives them an idea of what the, the table looks like. There's a lot of players who don't even look at it. But this, we, we've got players who are studying it. They know every single intricacy 100. that is happening. And I get the feeling that Connor and especially Reese, they know exactly what they've got to do. Yeah, they understand every permutation and variable. And a good response from Pinahan. Well, Leighton Bennett's got a few matches off and he will need them. 57. Connor, you require 107. I said yesterday, if I have one bit of advice for him, it's the mantra I go by. Whoever's trying to bring you down, 60. remember, they are already below you. That's so good. I saw social media this morning. Somebody had a pop at 60. our Whatever friend Luke Woodhouse about the way he played the last couple of days. He lost with 299 averages. <laughs> and they were saying, oh, surely you're good enough to be making last 16s. <laughs> He's made a final this year. 70. He's losing with a 99 average. What do you want him to do? <laughs> Play with a full dart? Yeah, just, just give him an extra dart and see how he gets on. He'd be excluded from the tournament for one. Also, didn't he have a, a massive win over 59. MBG this year, didn't he? On a yeah. Uruguay 40. Double top for Hino. Game he finds the it Connery. once again. This is a great performance, showing a bit of patience here. He didn't panic after losing leg one. Well, Fourth leg, he Anton. found himself Game two nil down and in a spot of bother. The response was that lovely 107 checkout for a 15 dart break back. 40. And then he's built on it. Now finds himself 2-1 to the good. Begs the question, doesn't it? 83. At what point this week do we see the A-grade Conor Heenahan stuff? Yeah, because he's he's not been anywhere near his best. Not at all. When we've got of evidence of people 65. finding their A game, we expect it to come out at some point. We know that he's hit a 115 plus average here on this stage. We wonder if he's going to get anywhere 60. close to that this week. We also know he's hit two nine darters on that stage. So far, we're still trying to figure out what kind of ceiling Anton 58. has. Weirdly, his best average of the week came on Monday in a losing performance. 58. In fact, there was only one player yesterday that had their best average of the week on day two, and that was Borowskis. 94. Everybody else had their best individual stats on the first day. Make of that what you will. 45. What I will say is that Conor Heenahan's performance against Reese Griffin in Game 3, that was one of his best so far this week. And that's one of the best 180s we've seen this week. Three dots compacted into the right half. And the tighter this game is, 85. the better it is for the chasing pack Anton because that seven-leg difference that Connor has got, that really is a bit of an ally at the minute. Double 16. Game shot on the fourth Fine, line. fine Anton finishing Austin. from Anton. In two of the legs he's played... Fifth he needed a second chance. Oh, he's averaging 90.48 to Connor's 85.43. He's the player that's... 100. And the 180s, he's at two of them. Connor yet to get one. This is an interesting dart that Connor's using because it's a very popular grip pattern. 60. Where you've got a little bit of space at the top of the barrel. And then you've got that uniformity going towards the end. And then that shaved 50 nose. It's, I yeah, isn't... think it's an old Gary Anderson dot. He sort of does as a, he has an unusual grip on the actual 
barrel itself, doesn't he? And he does grip that at the... Yeah, it's, it's almost the antithesis of Leighton Bennett. Because Leighton's hand is laid off, whereas Connors is closed. Yeah. When you put your hand in that position, you can't help but push your 59. shoulder. Because if you were to just throw it, you'd be throwing it to the floor. Yeah, it is a Gary Anderson dart, and the ones he used... 100. ...against MVG in a big final, where they had those ridiculous averages. One hundred and forty. Both averaging one hundred and eleven. Remember that one. Fondly. <laughs> like a sixty comfortable blazer that you put on, isn't it? It is forty-two. One four two is not going to be found. Fifty-eight. One oh seven. The best finish so far in this match. We haven't seen some really good finishes so far. In this game. We're not going to see another. But we've already 16. seen 84 from Ostland. Anton, you require 84. Replication means the lead. Same route. Same result. 3-2 to the Swede. And all of a sudden, you've got two people in the practice room licking their lips. Six leg Anton to throw first. So quiet in there, we wouldn't know Game anyone off. was in there. Quietest practice room I've ever heard in all the time that we've been here in Portsmouth, which is a year and three days. 61. That follows the loudest one, which was Saturday night. And that's got nothing to do with Conan or Steve 60. West or some of the others. It was purely because of Richard North. Sixty. We had a little bit of a chat yesterday, didn't we, Miss, about Ryder Cup teams? Yes. We did actually get somebody tweeting us yesterday, giving us their team. Yeah, you can tweet us as well at MSS Darts, all one word. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, Hassan 100. got in touch, saying that his British team would be Michael Smith. Luke Humphreys, Gerwin Price, Johnny Clayton, Rob Cross, Dave Chisnell, Ross Smith, 85. Ryan Searle, James Wade, Peter Wright, and Joe Cullen. <laughs> I mean, as a team, I mean, think about that in dark teams 80. kind of ways. I mean, that is, imagine them walking through the door. Yeah, just imagine the dynamic with them all on the same side. And then the rest of the world team would be this is really interesting, 96. actually. MVG, Dirk van Dijvenborde, Dimitri Vandenberg, Danny Notbert, Kim Hybrex, which I think is an interesting pick. Christoph Ratajski. Jose de Souza. Leonard Gates. 16. Damon Hetter, Simon Whitlock, Gabriel Clemens, and Martin Schindler. There are some in there that you think, well, maybe, maybe not, but it's an interesting talking point because... When you talk about that Great Britain and Ireland team, yeah, I would have a caveat in there. I, was, I would have to have an Irish Central player in there. Yeah. Brendan Dolan. Josh Rock. 60. Oh, Daryl Gurney at the minute. Yes. Really starting to cook. Now, He's playing very well at the moment. Speaking Darryl of Gurney. cooking, Connor might be cooked. 45. He might get his fingers burnt. Anton, you require Ostland 80. has not won since his first game yesterday. One more of those. And tops. 40. Connor, Connor you breathes again. 96. Yeah, faces a match dart. Avoids defeat, but has work to do. Trouble 20. Double 18. Yes. That's a fine clutch finish, my goodness. Absolutely fearless. There was not one 
ounce of doubt. Seventh and finally, are Connor we to going to be talking about that miss of tops later today? Because every now and again, in a group like this, you're going to have to win a game that maybe you could have lost. But that is not the ideal start. And he might pay for it. 140. Can he recover? That is the darting equivalent of getting the paddles. He has revived. Talk about a bit of a turnaround. He starts 23 and then goes 180. Sixty. Three points separate them. Plus these. Eighty-four. He's getting a bit of everything here. Bad visit, perfect visit, somewhere in between. Edgy, isn't it? He doesn't want to turn around. He can see what's happening. One hundred and thirty-seven. I like that player. Agreed. Not used enough. Oh, this is delightful. 130. Really good. Anton, your car, he does have the biggest finish of the week, does Anton? 161. Oh, no. Oh, no, Connor. What? Oh, what on earth? That has just shook this place. Connor Heenahan did everything right. He survived one match start in the previous leg, but he does not survive the 164. That is brilliant from the Swede. Wow, what a game that was. So now we all have to take a breath, and when we come back, Reese Griffin is going to be revitalized because now the person he's chasing has just lost. Take a break, everyone. We'll be back in two.
Wow, well, the vibrations are still reverberating through the building here at the Super Series. Anton Oslin with a 1 6 4 to beat Conor Heenahan in a last leg decider by four legs of three. And you could see what it meant to him in the celebration there for Heenahan. His opportunity to run clear at the group, at the top of the group, has come and gone. And so for Reese Griffin, he can basically put it back to where we started if he can get the better of Mindauskas Borowskas in this one. And with Benjamin Drew Ruste on Conor Heenahan in game seven, things are beginning to hot up. Let's hand over to Chris and Paul. Thank you, Henry. Yes, well, what a performance that was from Anton. And, well, First leg, purely, to throw purely selfish reasons. We're chuffed to bits with it. But nothing personal, of course, against Connor. But, wow, this really has hotted up. We feared the worst that maybe one of either Connor or Reese could run away with the group. Not so. This is turning into week four again because last week Conan Whitehead oh, won the group on 20 points and he had two players on 18 behind him. The same could happen again. Hey, Don't so. discount the likes of Borowskis, the likes of Ostland and Bennett because they are going to have some sort of impact on who wins this group. Yeah, it's they, just been felt. Yeah, if we can play the ultimate spoiler role. Anton certainly did there with that. 164. I mean, it was an incredible final leg. 81. We thought he blew it and then produced a magnificent 137 and then backed it up with a 164. 301 in six. 57. And those 284 checkouts on double 12. We can't forget about those. It really was a great performance. 95. But what it means is that Conor Heenahan knows now that he cannot afford to lose concentration at any point when he's on the hockey today. He's going to have to be on it. 140. Like a carb on it. Hey, look at Anton. He's only just squeezed 4-3 against Benjamin in the opening match of the day. And his response is a 4-3 win over league leader. 104. So we weren't a million miles off when we said he's he's got potential here this week. Double top for Reese. 84. Bendelskis, you're He's finding that 20. spot when he goes for tops. Double five. Ten. And he's not made to pay. Reese, you require 20. Take these shots when you get them. Because they are few and far between at this stage of the week. Game Wonderful shot from Reese. An early break means he's now in charge. Second leg Reese to throw first. What do you think? Game on. Borowskis will feel about his first couple of days. Well, having spoke to him a, a couple of times over the 85. course of his opening two days, he's absolutely loving it. <laughs> he's, he's, he's just, well, he said living the dream. And why not? Listen, he loves playing darts. What, 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 another great opportunity, isn't it, for a player? All his friends and family have been tuning in. 180. I wasn't really seen as a nation of strong darting talent until Darius Labanowski started doing stuff like winning the Hall Open and making Lakeside. And in order for a country to be seen in darting terms, someone's got to do something big. Well, what Reese Griffin is doing here in this next leg is something very big. 85. 2180s. 56. 56 checkout incoming for an 11 dart leg. Misses tops low again. But 10s are like fine for a 12. Griffin. 10s is his friend. His favourite double. He was Third leg Mendelskis to throw telling Game on. Binks. Will be in the eighty one. Well, he'll be doing what Danny's doing right now, refereeing tomorrow. Eighty one. I think one of the hardest jobs here is the referee. You have to do fifteen games on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's incredible concentration needed. Sixty. I've always had the utmost respect for the refs because 
they are expected to be perfect at all times 42. in a job that is very challenging. Yeah, I've, I had one go at it once. It was, it was a tournament in the Midlands. 100. The final was Michael Smith against David Pallet. I think I still have nightmares about it now. Uh, in, in the end, I was just going... 58. What is it, mate? What, what is it? Just tell me the score before I bark it. Yeah, exactly that. Of course, it's so quick. 100. Michael Smith wasn't too mad because he's, he's a fairly, you know, basic in terms of of his scoring. You know, it's either a ton of 140 or 180. Mendoz gives you a 160. But Dave Pallet, well, he tied me up in knots. And he knew what he was doing as well. Probably did it on purpose. 140. That was on purpose, I assure you. Now, Griffin and 81. Benjamin do have require 20. a little bit of a worry when it comes to the leg difference, but it's not drastic at this point. No score. Not really troubling the double 10 there, Mindy, but he will be back to put it right. Now, a six-leg difference between positions two and three and then the first the person in Connor. It's something that can be bridged when you play against that player. Game yeah, on the third leg. Is next, is isn't it? Benjamin Indeed. against Connor. Yeah, Reese can't do anything about it now because he's already lost 4 1 to Connor. Fourth leg, Reese to throw first. So Game let's on. say that from this position, Reese does hold it out. Regardless of what his leg difference is at the minute, what's the right result 58. for Reese in Game 7? Four three either way, isn't it? Yeah, eighty. I'd have to say four three. Benjamin, stack it up, and then let's have a party in the last three <laughs> rounds. One hundred. We love getting the old abacus out. One hundred. Sitting under the desk, a little bit of dust on it, just from the last few days. He wants to come out to play, Reese. 121. We're just sitting back, like watching those videos of people having mishaps. <laughs> 85. That's why I like videos on YouTube of, of animals, because you know it's not on 121. purpose. 121. It's not manufactured. A bit like that 180 yesterday from. Mendogus because you couldn't have one. dreamt that off. Still can't figure I've, it no, out. No, I've watched watched it once. I've watched it a hundred times, just trying to work it out. But eighty-five. Well, obviously, on eighty-two, he likes trying twenty-eight. Leave. Twenty-eight. Fair enough. Only, only problem 95. with that, you have to find a trouble to leave a double. Reese requires sixteen. Likes doubles at this height in this game. His double ten's been good to him. No score. There might be trouble ahead. And does because you require one hundred. Might be two two. Tops tops. He's 16. fortunate to be coming back, but you must Reese get it right this time. Sixteen. Game he does get it right. 3-1 to the Welshman, playing very decent stuff here. Average of 90.65. 37% on the doubles. Fifth leg, Mendoza, That's a formula that can work here. Game on. Well, as we know, and we've seen many times before, uh, an average of around 26. 90 can pretty much compete with averages well north of 90. 81. Every score that Mendogus gets that comes without a trouble. 57. Reese has got to be all over it. The wider the margin of victory in this game in hand that he has, the better. 140. Because if he wins leg five here for 4-1, he goes to 18 points. 
And no, plus he 13, he will be only three legs behind. He doesn't look like he's going to be denied 100. right now. He looks fairly smooth. Yeah, he's switched on, but not overly aggressive. 45. Very controlled. It's 1-1 one, one between these two over the last couple of days. They've had a couple of tight battles. 60. After this, it looks very much like they're going to be split up. 100. Reese require 120. And the Reese is going to go straight to Saturday night, or he's going to be in Group B, whereas Mindy's going to be in Group C. Yeah, Mindegas. 60. Anton and Leighton into Group C, which is Thursday and Friday afternoon, starting at 1. 130. Motor Super Series YouTube channel. Reese requires 60. Double top. Hasn't been kind yet. Game but now it is. And the match a great Griffin. victory for the Welshman. Second of the week against the Lithuanian. And after two rounds of play, we have a really interesting table. 89.1 in the end and 40% on the doubles. Very tidy from Rhys Griffin. They love that word tidy in Wales as well. So that's an ultimate compliment. But when we come back, we will chew the fat from the first couple of rounds. And we're about to see what happens next, because when the Dane takes on the Irishman, we will see a little bit more of the story.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where it's been a quiet night at the library, not at the live lounge in Portsmouth. Mason the Ace, Chris Mason's joined me up here on the balcony to assess what we've seen from the first two rounds of fixtures. These are the results from it. Plenty of twists and turns so far. It began in game three as Connor Heenahan got the better of Reese Griffin by four legs to one. It set in motion the possibility for Heenahan to really build an advantage, but Benjamin Drew Ruth, two wins and two, keeps himself in the mix. And before the break, Reese Griffin. Got the better of Mindauskas, Borowskas by four legs to one. As I say, Chris joins me up here on the balcony. And when Connor Heenahan got the better of, Re of Reese Griffin in that game, we thought that set in motion would be the, the possibility of Heenahan moving clear in that group. Yeah, and it was the nature of the win, wasn't it? It was 4-1, it was comprehensive. Connor looked very comfortable and we thought, right, he's gonna, is it going to take control of the group all over again? But... Well, the upset came in with Anton, who we've been predicting to, to do well for the remainder of the week. And I wouldn't be surprised to, to see him go well and even qualify for Saturday night. And this match had a... a, a well, this, this one was the, the comprehensive win for, uh, for Conor Heenahan. And you can see the reaction from Reese. But, wow, what a turnaround this was. I mean, the 96, when that's gone in, you're thinking, right, he's just going to find a way to win. He's going to do what... Connor does, but the end of this particular sequence of darts, there was a 1-3-7 before it, and then the beautiful 1-6-4, highest finish of the week, gets him the win and keeps the group alive and wide open. What is it with Anton Oslund and big checkouts this week? <laughs> yeah, he's had a 1-6-1, a 1-4-4, a, a host of uh, finishes between a ton and 120. He just seems very comfortable in that department. He's one of these type of players, though, that he either gets it first dart or he chases it around a bit. And that's been his undoing because uh, Nico looked at the stats this morning and, and we mentioned it on air that his stats really sort of defy the points that he has accumulated. He, he, you feel that he should have more. Well, let's have a look then at the all-important table at this stage of proceedings. Three games left to go for our players. Conor Heenahan and Reese Griffin both out on top on 18 points. Benjamin Drew Roos, though, just a couple of points behind. And that's significant because Benjamin and Conor are going head-to-head -head in our seventh game of the morning session. And quite simply put, this is the biggest game of the day so far. Yeah, it has to be. And they're going to they're gonna come thick and fast like this. I mean, there's six points up for grabs with three more matches for each of the players remaining. So we know that, that Anton, um, Baraskas and Bennett, are, their, their, their races run wide open at the top of the table. Uh, you, you do well to pick a winner from here. And Benjamin can free well now because he knows that he's going to be in Group B no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's, the, you know, it's, it's not completed, but it's job done in terms of avoiding Group C. Group B, all the players want to be in that if they don't win Group A, of course, because three from five goes through and it's played at night. Well, it should be good function in the next couple of hours. It's going to be. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a race towards the line. And it kicks off with Benjamin Drew Roos up against Connie Heenahan. Chris Mason's going to make his way down to the commentary box to describe all the action with Paul Nicholson. Yeah, let's get going with round three then. It's been a superb Wednesday so far. Full of great shots and drama, but it is this man from Denmark who has said, I'm not done yet. And can you imagine the scenes here in round three? If you've got Heenahan with two games to go and two players on the same points as him all of a sudden, because that is possible. First leg, Benjamin to throw first. Game on. Now, just bear with me for just a moment because there is a possibility in this game, and I'm seeing it at the very start for good reason. Because with Benjamin on 16 points and plus 10, Connor now on 18 points 100. and plus 16. If we get a 4 0 victory for the Dane. 60. He'll be top. If he wins by four legs to one, he will go to the same leg difference and the same points as Hina. 81. But his legs won are superior. So 4 1 or 4 0 to go to the top of the table with Reese Griffin having a game in hand. 85. Mace has joined me again, and we need to almost revisit the possibility of what is the best result. For Reese Griffin here because he's got 100. Leighton Bennett next and will be a huge favourite to win that match. Yeah, well, he, he will want Benjamin to take as many legs out of 
Connor Heenahan's 60. plus 16 in leg difference, which is three clear of himself. Because um, everything considered, is Leighton going to take much Andrew out of Reese? I can't see it. Probably not. Another. If that had gone in, I think Connor might have started having nightmares. Well, he's still going to be reeling a little bit from... Anton's 30. 164, which really halted his momentum. Game He's Jennifer's starting to find Benjamin the doubles Rose. that were haunting him yesterday, Benjamin. And that's all it was yesterday. That's the only reason it's like like you know, he wasn't first. even closer or, or equal on points with Connor and Reese because of missing 46. too many doubles. Indulge me, miss. He missed so many darts at double yesterday that he had 60 96. misses at a double. That is more than the total amount of shots at double of any player. <laughs> 100. That is frightening. It really is. So yesterday, he couldn't finish his dinner. 100 Are you a fan of Danish food? Because I am. Oh, I, I had the great... Certainly the pastries. They've got some unbelievable ideas when it comes 60. to seafood and herbs. Do they do a lot of smoking over there? You do a little bit. You, you get a bit of smoked herring over there and a lot of clean fish Ooh, open sandwiches. That's my kind of food. Whereas you go to Ireland... Like a good stew, a good pie. One hundred and twenty-five. I? I do like a. I do, don't get me wrong. I do love fancy food, but I'm also I love a bit of traditional home cooked. Ninety. There. Can I require one hundred and seventy? Give me a nice ploughman's in the summer. Plough the field, Connor. One hundred and forty-five. Benjamin, you require one hundred. That was for the first. Bit of fishing for the week. No shot at Shanghai. 100. For Benjamin. Only require 25. 25. One of the most common finishes that these Game people will go for, and it's level at 1 1. Is there an argument here for Rhys Griffin wanting? Keenahan to win this Perfect game for three. Throw first. Game because on. if he does and he goes to 20 and then Griffin wins his game, there's a four point cushion then to Benjamin making more of a two horse race. But as you can see from that 180, the who, first of the game, Benjamin's not going anywhere. Who do you think the bigger threat is? Keenahan or Benjamin? Benjamin. Because of the way he's been able to sustain his performances day wide whereas Connor yes. seems to have been tailing off and having said that the, the adrenaline's going to be kicking in a bit more today so maybe that will be less of a factor yeah they, he just goes off the boil doesn't he tails off five. Fifty-six. I like what I'm seeing this week from younger talents like Connor like Ostland, like Benjamin. It's almost like we're looking at the next step of their respective countries. With Ireland, you look at Willie O'Connor and Keen Barry and some others, like 50. Steve Lennon, who Connor is struggling to keep his tour card at the minute. But the next phase of Irish darts is right in front of you with Connor. Next phase of Danish darts is right in front of you with Benjamin. 86. Let's see Benjamin, you require 130. if we can get a baby fish finish. Shot still on. Ooh. 41. Connor, you require 16. Lost the first leg. No score. And might lose Benjamin, leg you three. Benjamin, require 89. Let's find out. He's already had a bull finish today, but he's not even going to get a look at it. That's about as much 
lack of concentration, as you will see on the face of Benjamin, because he's particularly stone-faced. But even he was disappointed at missing the 20 there. He's not immune to pressure. Double four. 12. And Connor is not immune to pressure either. You require 54. No, and they were wayward. Tops for a steal. Tens. Oof. 34. Right on it. Are you require four. He's very fortunate to come back for double two and take it. Connor that is a very, very edgy 19 dot break of throw. Fourth leg, Connor to Each throw and every first. leg Game that on. they play against each other in the top three is giving us different possibilities. Because like you said with Henry at the top of that Seventh game. We now have our Group C confirmed. Barauskas, Ostland and Bennett will go to Group C. And we'll play against Joe Croft, Eight Ryan Harrington five. and David Varvazewski. Yeah, and the name Croft will be very familiar to people in the world 100. of darts. Probably of sort of my era, I suppose. I presume you're not talking about David. No. <laughs> Now, that's Formula One. 45. Yeah, he's the grandson, of course, of Ollie Croft, the founder of the British Darts Organization that used to run the big major tournaments. 95. Grandson? Yeah. That's great. That'd be yeah. a lot of he just he, Yeah, sorry. He just shined, signed with Mission Darts. 135. Been doing okay as well. He's been playing a bit on the Challenge Tour. He's made a... The last 16 and the last 32. It'll be the first time I will have 64. I've watched him. And talk a bit about Ollie tomorrow then. Yeah, I can remember him. I can remember him knocking around Lakeside as a kid when I was playing there. I think he's about yeah, he's about 85. 30 now. So was he knocking around with Aaron Monk back then when Aaron was <laughs> crying during his dad's matches? 97. Oh, that's a lovely cover shot, isn't it? This game could be so different if the tops has hit. Game it's only gone and happened again Benjamin to Conor Heenan. What has he done to these guys from Scandinavia? They're picking him apart. <laughs> oh, he's been done with a 1-6-4. Like he's just been first. done there for 2-2 two, two with a 1-5-1. Not even his best of the week. He's got a 153 in the bank. 44. He's going to need Steve Collins' chin today. <laughs> He's been hit so hard. 125. Chin was made of granite. That really was a very good shot. 100. I wonder if. Benjamin had a, a chat with his dad, Egon, this morning about the permutations and the, the motivation that he needs to try and have a couple of days off. He's going to need results to go his way. They have so far. 57. He still needs things to go his way because Reese Griffin has got a game in hand, but he's got to take care of his own business first. A lot of the time in this match, since leg one, he's finding himself behind after nine darts. 140. But he is to the finish first here. Get the win and he'll be to the manor born. <laughs> 54. Benjamin, you require 160. Oh, it's advantage, Benjamin. Can't back the... 151 up with a 160, but he's going to leave it low. 140. Oh, Two 140s in a row that you dream about. 28. Benjamin, you require 20. This one so far is about as up and down as the pirate ship at Metroland. Shot of the fifth leg, Benjamin And it is 3-2 to Benjamin Drew Roos. Six leg Connor to throw first. Connor has come through a Group B situation before, 85. but he doesn't even want to play tomorrow or on Friday. 
when you're at the top of the table at the start of Wednesday, you think about one scenario and one scenario only. And that is getting through. You like guarantees in this format. The guarantee of being here on Saturday. 45. But you mentioned the guarantee of being in Group B with Henry. And I suppose that takes any sort of residual pressure off a fall in the table away from the Dane. 140. Yeah, I, I just think it's it's just a nice scenario to be in. You know, isn't all the you want to win it. Well, some players don't like 83. winning it because they prefer to prefer to play. We've seen the curse of Group A often enough, where you just lose that match sharpness by having two days 60. off. But just to know and have that security that you're going into Group B at least, where you have a 60% chance of qualifying, only a 30% chance qualifying out of Group C. Oh, 125. Oh, what a Second dot was dragged way high and left. But now it's a guaranteed look at a one treble combo to put Heenahan on two defeats 95. from three games today. You require 116. He is not going to go top of the table if he wins this game. 30. But he's going to be super close. He took out a brilliant 96 earlier in a similar situation. <coughs> Benjamin, back for 54-32, 18 ball. 86. Gets three. Can he get two of those? 54. Well, that was 56. a guilt-edged opportunity to get a 4-2 win and to get super close to Connor in the table. Can he survive by hitting tops? Game on the six leg, Connor Heenahan. I'll give him his due. He is surviving match darts against opponents, but Seven when he's getting his opportunities, he is Game taking on. them. So good under pressure, hasn't he? And not a flicker of emotion or reaction from doing that. 100. But is there a worry? Easy for me to see. I'm looking at the averages today. He started with a 92.44 beating Reese Griffin. That was a really accomplished display. Since then, 83.92 against Anton. Here, 25. Just under 81. Yeah, and he's going in the wrong direction, Nico. 83. The draw for the final European tour of the year has been made. I'll take you through any of the standout matches when we come back after this game. So stay tuned for that. Well, Connor's on the gooch. Needs to go Gucci Gucci Coo. And he does. That one hits the boundary. He needs to hit another. 85. Oh, don't leave him on that 151, one, whatever you do. Well, I know that he's going to get a shot, but... Very rarely do you see somebody take 39. this kind of shot twice. 151. Not again. Can he do to Benjamin Connor what Benjamin did to him? Ooh, went for the two trouble 19s and tops. 46. Double 10 to wrap it up. Full 20. three. Game he does. And the match. Undefeated Benjamin today. Drew. Three from three for Benjamin Drew Roos. It's another decent average as well, 87.33. The doubles were very accomplished. He's polishing off all of the games today with very good stuff. And as far as yesterday's shortcomings, they are being thrown in the bin because he is the best player today.
And now we have a three-horse race definitively at the top of the table. It's over to you, Reese. What can you do in response to that against Leighton Bennett? Welcome back to the Motor Super Series. Before the break, Benjamin Drew Roos continued his perfect start to the day and really has put himself in contention for Group A glory. A 1-5-1 checkout en route to a 4-3 success against Connor Heenahan, who now has his back firmly up against the wall. Right, next up for us, it is Reese Griffin in action, where he can take command of Group A because victory here will move him on to 20 points if he can get the better of Leighton Bennett watching this one. Chris and Paul. Thank you, Henry. Yeah, a win here, any win for Reese, because the leg difference would be irrelevant because he will actually be ahead by the one win and two points. He would go on to 20. And just have a look at his running. To Peru first leg to Game on. has been to play in our final match of the session. In between that, he plays Anton, who could, again, be a, a spoiler. And it's a tough running. 100. For Reese Griffin, where Ben has Rascus to play, nice. and Reese. Hmm. This isn't over yet. It is not. Fifty-five. It could be an abacus kind of day, Nico. I think it might be. All perfect darts at the start of the match for Reese. I think he might 
be very pleased with the way things have gone today, considering he lost his first match. Yeah. 59. He probably felt, and especially losing to Connor, that his race was running Group 8. Oh, how things can change. Sometimes in this individual sport, 98. in this format, you need allies. And I think both Reese and Benjamin are very, very pleased with Anton Ostland Reserve right now. 86. <laughs> Sure, because it's all his fault. Double sixteen, fifty-four. We have seen quite a few people this week on multiple occasions have problems on double sixteen. We had a conversation yesterday. If you know which player in there is easy most likely 32. to sort of put a, an arm around late and then Game just give him some. Leg. Reassurance as Reese pops in a 13 dart break of throw in leg one. I had a chat Second with leg Reese to Reese yesterday, Rufus. and he did Game exactly up. that, which was which was nice. As yeah. did Connor Enan. They've both been supportive of Leighton this week. 57. You never know when it could turn around. Let's say in a couple of years' time, Leighton is flying again. He could be back here at the Motor Super Series. And someone like Connor, someone like Reese, might be struggling a bit. And do you remember that time a couple of years ago when you offered me some advice? Can I can I be there for 100. you now? Yeah, I mean it's very. I mean, it's 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 easy to forget that he is only seventeen years of age, and you know, just got to be a bit, a little bit careful. Been a, a very young man. And players of that age need a really good support system. 60. I agree wholeheartedly. I think people in his immediate area, family, teammates, people that he meets for the first time, he wants those experiences and those interactions 96. to be positive. And he comes from a county that has had such a massive say in darts over the last couple of decades. 135. I wonder who his heroes were growing up, but then again, he was born in 2005. So it probably wasn't anybody from the 1990s. 22. Reese Aguara, 149. Big finishes today. 117. Oh, everywhere. And I just thought that that was going to go in. Well, I felt like it was more likely to go in than miss. <laughs> One six four, one five one. One hundred. Got plenty of those as well. Reese require thirty two. It might not matter though. Double four. Game shot. That is a leg. third Reece dart Griffin. from heaven to take a two nil lead. He's already got two wins against Leighton this week so far. How much Game he on. craves a third. Looks a lot smoother today. I like this rhythm. Yeah, and there's there's no shock into the shoulder. That's a great word for it, shock. 93. A lot more fluency with it as well. Less effort. And it's softer, isn't it? That speed from the back end of the action. 95. And the forward motion has just slowed down a touch of so the... Darts travelling through the air a lot more efficiently, which ultimately means 100. it needs a little less effort. It's almost a, a strange thing to say, isn't it, that you need less effort in order for it to be 60. better. Yeah. It's the same with uh, with hitting a golf shot because people try and hit the ball too hard. You lose the timing. Same with the cricket shot. I can swing a golf club beautifully without a ball in front of me. <laughs> you look at someone like Johnny Bairstow who can smack the ball way out the ground. 56. But give him a, a good length delivery and he'll give you an on drive that will be far prettier with less effort. 27. Late in your war, 150. I'm 
One four three is a very tough ask. Ninety five. Raise your choir one hundred and forty three. He may need it if he wants three nil. Decent performance in terms of fifty seven scoring here from 55. Bennett, averaging eighty eight at the moment. Almost three legs deep. No score. Not the first time that's happened. No, I was going to say you picked up on that very early. Dart that gets dragged. Bullseye for Griffin. 61. That was on track. Late in your require 55. Just didn't catch the bottom left corner of the hot spot. Different plan here for Leighton. Double nine. For a second, I thought that he in thought that was in. That one is minutes. in the match now. Results so far today for Leighton. 4 1, a loss to Lithuania. To Lindy Borowskis. Game on. And then lost 4 0 to Denmark's Benjamin Drew Roos. 60. That's only his second leg win of the day. Didn't do a, a great deal wrong against the Dane, but that 4 0 victory was probably 60. A little harsh. But then again, sport can be harsh. Yeah, darts is uh, especially cruel, I think. 39. Just thought of a really good darts t shirt. In fact, you could write, It's cool to be cruel. <laughs> 96. You think back to the World Championship matches over the year. I had one in particular against John Parr. I had one more legs. I had a higher average. It more than eight is lost. <laughs> I remember sitting down thinking, that can't be right. <laughs> we talked about Connor yesterday, didn't we? No. He didn't have the highest average for the day. He didn't have the most 180s. He didn't have the best percentage on doubles. He didn't have the best check out. The highest Three individual years. average in a game, but he was top of the table. Funny old game. That first dart is a sign that 53. the points are going in. What I like to call a little bit Dave Askew. A little bit of skew. <laughs> They're not going in straight. You look at the points and the barrels of Reese Griffin, they're going in with very little effort and they're going in straight and they're not wobbling at all. Whereas if you look at these ones, they're going in almost a little bit to the side. 96. Almost reminds me of a bit Reese of Wes Newton. Yeah. The wheelie bin. Fifty-three. Chance for Bennett. 100. To be 2-2. Two -two. Another one of those. Oh, that's a bright spark, isn't it? That's a little bit of flamboyance from Boom Boom. And that made him feel good. Absolutely. Fifth leg Leighton to Thoroughford. Those little Game things off. that can lift his spirits. He will be feeling, I'm sure, a little disappointed. 96. Do you sometimes worry for for young dart players like Leighton because they don't they don't have a craft to fall back on? I know that there was a lot made of Johnny Clayton when he was a plasterer and still playing in the Premier League. Darren Webster, yeah, exactly. Mark Webster, plumber, even when he Glenn was Darren. playing full. Yeah, Glenn's a great example. Still working for local authority housing, I think it was. But when you go all in. On yep. the game of darts, you're backing yourself. And especially when things aren't going your way, you live with that pressure 24-7. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's... Yeah, I don't, I don't envy them nowadays, that's for sure, because the cost 59. involved of being a dart player in my day was huge. Nowadays, it's... Even though there's, even though there's no entry fees, the, the price of travel and hotels now are just... 
horrific. Oh, 100 and I was speaking 30, to Nick 40. Kenny a couple of years ago about how he was still working for the Department of Work and Pensions and playing PDC darts. Yeah, and I mean, if you have got a job and you want to keep it, you need a, a very relaxed boss, don't you? Yeah, you do. Double 16. 79. Could have been two ton plus checkouts Reacher and two legs. These guys at the top of the table are not getting it easy. Nope. We said in the last game we could have the potential of a host of spoilers. We talked a lot in the first half of play today about what was the right result 74. for Reese. Now we're looking at what's the right result for Benjamin and for Connor. It could be happening for them. Game it is happening. It's 3-2 Bennett. Pressure Six isn't to just for tyres sometimes. <laughs> Game on. This is definitely a sign of I want to be top. He can still be top if he wins the last two legs. It would get him to 20, but his best case scenario now is to be top with a leg difference of plus 14, which wouldn't be the best. However, he's in a situation Ooh, where it's in his hands if he does win. Because if he wins his two remaining games, he wins Group A. 121. Because this cycle of games, there's only one more match, and that's Anton against Mindy. And they're both on eight points. Yeah, we can take a bit of a, a break from the top half in the next match, but we're not taking that break just yet. 96. If Bennett was to nail this sixth leg, Griffin's leg difference could join... Benjamin on plus 11. 96. And that would put Connor four legs ahead again with the same points. And he would consider himself vastly fortunate considering he's lost two of his three games today. 96. Reese require 167. So Bennett is going to get a look at a two daughter. Get his first win of the day and to make 92. sure that all three days in Group A have seen everybody get points. 74. Just misses out. He just run out of room. Reese, you require 36. Oh, Reese has dodged a bullet there. That would have been his second double double finish in the match. On the sixth leg, Reese but Again, under extreme pressure. Reese Griffin finds the double. Just get the feeling that Leighton's starting to have a bit of fun now. Well, there's a few more Game smiles, up. which is something we said was important to him because releases some serotonin. Uh, 140. Very much a feel-good chemical the brain produces naturally. 57. Which in turn... Will relax you. Need to find what works for you. Sometimes the yep. best medicine is a bit of laughter. 57. I do not hear any laughter in the practice room right now. Oh, that's splendid from Reese. He needed that to get in touch with Leighton. Can he find a 140 to leave 170? Get half a dart ahead. You bet he can. Got to be smart here. 40. He was smart, Reese but it's advantage Reese. Possibly 
Six starts 60. away from 20 points. Legend, you require 164. Where have we seen this before? Wasn't that way, though, was it? <laughs> no, it wasn't. Anton hit it 64. the harder way. Raise your yeah, bar one Traditional route. But where have we seen 100 for Leighton Bennett before? In this game. Yeah, on top's tops. Will he get a go? He, he will not. And I'm at Huge Griffin. check out there of 110 for Reese Griffin. It smiles from Bennett because he played so much better in that game. Average just under 84, but the 89-11 and the 36% on the doubles. It just gets Reese across the line. And now he's top of the table on points. He has a two-point cushion going into round number four. But when we come back next, it will be a bit of a break from the top spot race as Anton takes on Mindy. Welcome back to the Motor Super Series. Where before the break, Reese Griffin got the better of Leighton Bennett in a last leg decider to move himself clear at the top of the table by two points. As for Anton Oslud and Mindauskas Borowskas, both players know they're going to be in Group C on Thursday and Friday, respectively. So these final couple of games may be to be a bit of a spoiler and to try and pick up points and confidence ahead of their Thursday and Friday afternoon antics. And talking about antics, let's head down to Paul and Chris in commentary. Thank you, Henry. We're always on our best behaviour. Yeah, a little bit of a breather before we return to again, top of the to table Rupert. action with Conor Heenan against Leighton Bennett, who pushed 
Table topping Rhys Griffin very, very hard there in the last match. In fact, had a, a double 18. So a bit of a hammer blow on Rhys Griffin. But that 110 finish, Nico, absolute class, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was really classy. One. Just looking ahead to what's happening over the next round in a bit. It's fascinating to see who's playing who in 60. round four. Or should we say round 14? Because that's what it is in the context of Group A. Anton, who has had an enormous impact on the top three already, is going to be taking on Rhys Griffin at the end of round four. But before then, 91. Rhys is going to get an awful lot of information from Connor and from Benjamin because Bennett plays Heenahan after this. Benjamin plays Mendaugas Borowskis after that. Then Ostland goes from four for Connor to friend. 140. And we're running out of games. That dream scenario of three players on 20 points 30. going into the final round. Only require 110. It could happen. Another 110 finish. This time a different way. Game but still taking. Loves Oslo. a finish. I've already touched on that this week. I'll compile his Second entire leg, bingo card of finishes for Group C because that's exactly where he's going. You need a big bingo card. Might have to stick that 164 in the middle 43. unless he betters it over the next couple of rounds. I suppose if you're going to qualify for Group C via Group A, the best place is to be in fourth position just to say that, well, I was the best of the rest. But here's the funny thing about these two at the minute. They can barely be separated. Anton's on 10 points. Borowskis on 8. But it will be Anton in firm control. If he wins this one. 171. Not for the first time today. Anton's had a... 100. Had a decent day today. Got edged out 4-3 in his opening game, but... Did respond with a 4-3 win over Conor Heenahan. Anton, you require 140. Completion of this match. All the players have just two matches remaining. 44. Mendelska, you require 156. 60. Anton, you require 96. Saw one of these from Conor Heenahan a couple of matches ago. I'm not going to see one here 56. from the Swede, but how about the Lithuanian? 96. He may stay there because that's a good guide. Yeah, right to stay there as well for me. 56. It's not as if that's and the norm for him as well 40. because he has done the double-double route yep. at times this week. So he is thinking on his feet. Anton's thinking about 2-0. James on the second very, leg. Very Anton good indeed. Oslo. Now is that dart a James like a like a James Wade dart? It's got the same sort of grip pattern. It's got that black onyx Anton's coating on it by the looks first. of it. I'm trying to think. Game on. Who else would use something like this? Funnily enough, I think it might be Steve Lennon. Yes. Same sort of thing. He's got a bit of a smooth portion towards 60. the first quarter of the dart, which is probably a waiting thing. 85. Takes a brave dart player to wear white, you know. 
I think there, there aren't many dark players who have graced the white shirt and, and made it look good. Steve Beaton, though. Yeah. He's probably the one that... Well, we mentioned a player yesterday, Cootie. He used to wear a white shirt. 55. He used to wear it a lot with red trim as well when he was playing for England. You haven't got any of your England shirts left, have you? No, I'm gutted. Would you like them? 43. Yeah. Right, an appeal time. <laughs> yeah, who's got my England shirts? If anybody's <laughs> got a Chris Mason England shirt, please get in touch. You'd like to buy one back. Yes, I would. Very much so. 95. Recently, I went through an inventory of my, my old darts and I realised I never had a set of the very first ones. That's right, your phase with the, ones. With, with the red rings on yeah. them. 134. And Somebody got in touch and said, I've got a set. I'm willing to sell them because I've just bought a house. So I need to raise a little bit of capital. And I said, how much and do you want for them? I actually have them now. Get in there. So many thanks to Jack Hunter from Norfolk, uh, or it might be Suffolk. Uh, a really nice gesture from Jack to allow me to purchase them back. 81. Forty-two. Now Anton's got. Anton, you require forty. All of this game in his lap. Double sixteen. Game on the third no leg. No problem Anton whatsoever. He might have had a few mishaps on the doubles over the last couple of days, but not so much in this game. Seventy-five percent so far with three hits from four. Game on. And Augus is failing to get a shot at any double. 100. Is this the part of the day where you realise that there's nothing you can 59. do about where you're going to go the next couple of days and you just think, well, I'm going to play it, I'm going to do my best, but... The absence of urgency 100. is reflected in what you throw. But I think that can work both ways because we often see in matches where say it's a, a race to four sets and a player goes three sets behind, he'll then all of a sudden just go into full-on practice mode and start producing their best starts until they reach that pressure point again. Yeah, I think we're seeing a 100. case for both sides of the coin in this game. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. We are seeing Anton playing relaxed darts, and especially when you consider what he did in his previous game, he might be getting the indication of what he can do on this stage for the next couple of days right here. 50. He's a maximum away from a match dart. 83. Providing that Mindy does not take... 118, of course, which is got your number. <laughs> I don't think he's got Anton's number in this match. 100. Even if he takes out the 118. 18's first on 118. That's a long and protracted 58. debate. Anton, you require 112. Well, I used to go that way. <laughs> used to? Yeah. Yeah, long time ago. I thought that was the best route. Probably because I don't like double 19, I suppose. 100. Mendoz, because you require 60. Double top. But I realised I potentially preferred it to the ball. 40. Now, Osland likes a 4-0. You got one yesterday. 12. And that was against Leighton Bennett. That was his first win of the day yesterday. And it was his last one before he beat Conor Heenan. Is he doubling down today? Game. Yes, shot. he is. And the match. What Anton a fine performance Oslo. that was from Anton Oslund of Sweden. Because he did score very, very steadily throughout. Six ton plus throws, six, well, a couple of ton 40 uh, throws as well with a couple of maximums. 57% on the doubles and an average just shy of 90. A very accomplished display, just taking advantage of a very slow Mindy there. When we come back, it will be the start of what could be a very eventful round four.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series. Uh, before the break, Anton Oslo got the better of Mindauskas Borauskas by four legs to nil. So that moves the Swede on to 10 points in the league table. This is what we've seen so far today then with a couple more rounds of fixtures to go. That's the tail of the tape as far as the order of play is concerned. And this is how the table is occupied with a couple more games for everybody to go. Reese Griffin leads away on 20 points. Connie Hinahan and Benjamin Drew keeping close competition on 18. Hinahan can move on to 20 with victory here. And just to kind of look ahead as the day goes along, the final game of the session is between Griffin and Drew Roos. Is that going to be important? We're going to find out. But let's get to the business of here and now. Hinahan in action. He takes on Leighton Bennett. And watching this one in the culture box is Chris Ample. Thank you, Henry. Yeah, well, from mid to lower end of the table, back to the top end of the table. As Connor Hinahan, who is currently sat in spot two. Playing Lane First Bennett, who played much better Clippers. last time out. Game on. And still playing with a lot of passion. And he would love to get a win over Conor Hinahan here. It's all about Nine him setting six. up himself for Group C action tomorrow afternoon from one. Sporty stuff. TV from three. But you won't miss any action as we're on the Modus Super Series YouTube channel from one o'clock. Now the pressure's on Conor, isn't it? And on Benjamin. Because Nine if they don't three. win in this round, both of them, and Reese Griffin beats Anton Osland. That's the end of the game. 60. Now today, Connor is averaging 85.62 for his three games, but every single time he plays, that goes down a bit. He must arrest that slide. Yeah, and Leighton last time out averaged 83.56, so they could well meet around that kind of number here. 60. I don't think Connor's ever done anything the easy way. He's never won a weekly title. 58. Indeed, there's only one person who has this week. That's Owen Bates. He will make his way here later today and take on all other players in Group B over the next couple of nights. 100. An esteemed company, then. 100. You've been blowing the dust off the darts, Nico. I've been practicing a little bit. Ooh. 96. I've got the chance. Connor Yorkhorn, 96. Well, I've had a bit of a break. 88. Well, well, almost like being 85. back in retirement. I've not picked them up since the dreaded Leonard Gates day. Back in Yeovil. Seems to happen quite a lot at the minute, Leonard Gates Day. 65. Nice recovery try there from Leighton. You require eight. It's at that point I don't mind the treble 13 in tops. Agreed. Game shot on the first leg, Connor Hinehan. I'd rather have a dart, uh, a favourite double than. Second leg, Leighton to throw not. first. Game on. We do have to talk about the leg difference. But we can't ignore the fact that if Reese Griffin 42. beats Anton Osland and Benjamin Drurius in the last game, he will be through. It's in his hands at the minute. It's not in Connors. 85. In a funny sort of way, of the three players, it's furthest away from Connor. 100. Because he's not playing against... Anybody he rivals at the minute. No. He can't rob anybody of points at the same time as getting them himself. 55. Those games have come and gone, and they've gone against him pretty much apart from... Reese Griffin game. Yeah. He lost to Benjamin. He lost to Reese, And if he doesn't get through this group, he knows exactly why. But the fact that Benjamin 53. is playing against Reese in the last game, that might be the trump card. Because based on what we saw from Mandaugas Borowskis in the last game, 
Benjamin could butcher him. Ninety-eight. Every leg is vital, especially when Heenan is protecting the best leg difference in the group. Forty-five. Is that going to be his ace in the hole? Doesn't even matter if you're not on the same points. One hundred. Late in your wire, one hundred and thirty-five. Bullseye first for this. Or a 25. What a marker that is. What a marker it was. 70. Connor, you require 110. 51 for tops. And now Leighton needs another 50. 25. Leighton, you require 65. Besides, on the old treble 19 routine. Double 16 does not come to his aid on this occasion. So Connor is going to have to bend it like Beckham again around the wall. 40. Not this time. So double eight for Leighton to level things up and take another leg out of Connor. He now pins it perfectly. What chance Early to at first. this stage? Because I think we have learned a little bit something about Leighton today that he's he's working towards 59. something. So let's put him into Group C. Put him up against Joe Croft, David Vavrzewski, and Ryan 43. Harrington. What chance do you give him of the top two? The level he's playing at now. I think he needs to find a. I think you need to be around 86, 87, 88, around that kind of range. One hundred and forty. Yeah, I think I think you need to be, and he's he's below that at the moment, isn't he? What was his average over the course of two days? Seventy-eight point seven six. Yeah, that's not going to cut it in Group C. I know he's lost all of his games today, but his stats, I predict, are 58. better today than yeah. Visually, the last he's, couple. He's looked better today. I mean, his main issue today has been double trouble. 60. Stats there were incredible. After two and a bit legs, they were both on 74.88. Yeah, he's 80.23 yeah. for the day, so he is trending in the right direction, but he still needs to find more. 140. Yeah, I think he's played at his best level so far and we're seeing it today I think the thing that encouraged me the most was that he started the day better he averaged in the 60s in his first game over the last two days whereas today yep. it went up a good good few percent he's, he's just looked he's, he's just looked more comfortable hasn't he mm, definitely ball ball plenty of room 73. <laughs> I think he was dreaming of that shot. I think he was I think he was trying to it was one of those that needed to be crashed in, didn't it? Good thinking, just didn't get there. 80. Late in your require 47. You're going to go back to the 32. Seems like double 18's been put in the bin. 15. Well, that's the problem with the darts going in at that angle. Yeah, I almost wanted 20. to see the other angle just so our viewers at home could see how far across the the dart lies. 10. Gets another poke. Lady Pressure on Heenahan, and it's telling. It is in lots of different ways. Look at this dart. Look how much that is across the line. Inge on the third leg. Oh, he, so he, has, he has to make an adjustment down. Where if the darts were very neutral going in, you can go inside it. that marker dart. Can't be ignored that Heenahan 60. is not anywhere near his best in this game. He's got 
well, the trend at 140 in three legs. The trend you spoke of on each of the two days, it's Steve happening Devon. again, isn't it? It has to be addressed. Yep. When we see a pattern, we'll let you know. 43. It's like walking into a wool shop, you're just surrounded by them. Trust me, I know I was dragged into those things by my mum for 58. years. And I used to say to myself, what am I doing in here? There's a dart shop next door. They were good days. Saturdays off school. Go down to the local town that had a little dart shop. Yeah, we had we had that the house of darts on Gloucester Road. And that was ninety four. Well, heaven. Yeah, I remember Macrop and Sons in, in Blythe up in Northumberland when I was a kid. It was a a shop that had lots of different sports goods, 99. but it was very small. Predominantly it was indoor sports stuff they had, but I used to look on the wall at the at the stuff that I could afford. You know, the odd set of stems, the odd set of flights with my paper own money. And then I would see these John Law golden unicorn darts at the top of the shelf and think, one day oh, I will own a set. I never did. Three. Never got a set. Could never throw them. But one of the best days of my young life was when I got a set of Bob Anderson's for my birthday. One and before I left for Australia, I gave them to my best friend and he still got them. Oh, lovely. I don't think Connor's going to be best friends with Leighton if he takes this. Is that a bounce out? Well, now he's got to go 16 for Bull then. Nineteen Again, third dart of the bullseye is a good measure low. One from nine on the doubles. No score. One from ten. Late in your require uh, 47. A doubling disaster. He's sticking with the double 16, Paul. Must be a little bit humid. Sticky. Well, that is not a good guide at all. It's got to go high. Game did go high. Super, super dark. Well, early stages of the Euro Tour qualifier, the European Tour 13, the final one of the year. Wins so far today. Ross Montgomery, 6-3 against Adam Smith. Neil, Richard has through against Robbie Knott. Slowey Williams out to Kevin Doetz. Graham Hall with 102.68, a name familiar with the Super Series, defeats Robbie John, 6-2. Wadey through 6-5 against Roman. De Souza out to Gavlas. Lennon defeats Gilding. Ross Smith safely through. Lukeman beats Ratajski, 6-5. A big, big shock. Owen Roloff's 6-5 winner against Gary Anderson. Well, everybody's chasing something at this time 16. of year. You've got these players chasing spots in Saturday night. You've got people chasing spots in the last European Tour event, which, of course, if you make it, you might be chasing the European Championship 95. in Dortmund. And the slam. Indeed. Just around the corner. Connor is chasing Leighton. 134. Who is not averaging high, but is... Finding more tr two treble visits than at any point that I can remember. 134. Once all three. That dart is still going in sideways. Sometimes it can help you, sometimes it can hinder you. 87. 20 for the bull. To stay in the match. 62. Weight of dark, Waiting perfect. Your 94. Slightly west of the target. Well, that leaves 44. Double 16. 62. A match dark missed. Honor, you're we have 25. said that once before about late in today. 
He'll have to wait to see if he gets another. Because when he missed the second double 18 in his previous game against Rhys, he paid the price. Six leg to throw first. In leg game seven, off. when Rhys got that wonderful 110 checkout to take him out. A couple of people in the practice room were hoping that Leighton would hit that double 16. 81. Yeah. So in Rhys Griffin would have had his fingers crossed. 140. I still see this going to the last round of matches. I don't see a scenario in my own honest mind that this is going to be 96. done by the fact that Reese wins game 12 and the others are four points behind. Either Connor is going to win this match 57. or Benjamin's going to win his match next. One of those two things is going to happen, if not both. Or am I just craving drama? I think drama is guaranteed. Fifty-seven. Sign of a tired arm that the first two darts are short of their target. Starting on the 19s, five of them need 170. Can go up now, trouble 20 for 167. 98. Good thinking. Average is almost identical in this game. 77 and change. 58. And six darts will get it done for Leighton. If you were to offer him a 1-3-1 right now, he'd have your hand off. 95. Probably done him a favour, that single 20, because it takes 95. away the temptation. Yep. We know he's a particularly flamboyant player, so he probably would have given it a shot. He's already missed 82. one match dart at 32. You require 72. Should get at least one dart at a double here. He's going to get two at double six. Leighton Bennett, can he be a big, big spoiler? No, Ooh, cool. no he's bust. I'd like to say that hasn't happened this week, but it's happened multiple times. On sixes and tens. This would be daylight robbery. 72. But now here's Leighton the problem with busting 72. the score. He's coming back for a two darter again when it could have been three darts at a double. Same scenario. What does he do differently this time? That's hey, what he shot. does differently. He actually hits it. Bennett. And that throws the cat amongst the pigeons when it comes to the top of the table race. It's a first win of the day for Leighton Bennett. And if we just can disperse with the top of the table clash at the minute, that means that everybody has won at least one game per day. And sometimes that just doesn't happen. So well done, Leighton. Good performance. When we come back, we will survey the table a bit more and see what Benjamin can do about it against Mindy.
Well, it turns out today may well be the moving day at the Super Series. Leighton Bennett with a big, big victory. Boom, boom against Conor Hinehan by four legs to two. And so this is what it does as far as the table is concerned. And so Hinehan, who won that opening game of the day, remember, against Reese Griffin, well, it's all gone downhill from there for the Irishman. And so Griffin on 20 points, Hinehan on 18, and Drew Roos on 18. So next up for us it is a meeting between Mendy and Benji and the Dane was hoping to be the engine man as far as Wednesday is concerned. And we've got our very own Anton Deck in the commentary box in the case of Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. I know that was terrible. I don't know which one I am, Henry, to be honest with you. Am I Deck or am I Ant? Well, we've Perfect lost him. But the fact of the matter is, game on. this game is all about Benjamin. It's all about the Benjamins, baby. Roller coaster. 130. <laughs> That's as Jody as I get, I'm afraid. You've been looking at that video online of how to do accents. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Carr. 100. <laughs> Poopa scoopa. What's the one from Mercy Second? I want a can of hold. 85. <laughs> well, this one is all about the Benjamins or the Benjamin. 100. Because. We said a little bit earlier in the day that if Benjamin was to get a, a, a big win, he would vault himself up the table. 81. The same can happen here, but now it's different because Hinehan is no longer in the driving seat. 95. He can be overtaken, but so can Reese Griffin by the day and if he wins 4 0. Yep, he'll go top. He'll 100. go to 20 points and plus 15. Reese Griffin, 20 points plus 14. Let us just remember 16. at the top of the show Windows when I said it looks like a two-horse race, but there are scenarios that are afoot that could invite Benjamin in. I don't remember the exact odds that he was at. Sixes, wasn't he? I'm sure he was six to one. Double 13? 133. Yeah, that was, that was the value bet, wasn't 40. it? Game well, the, the problem he's got right now is that Mindy skills. has taken the first leg. Second leg, Benjamin to throw first. Game on. One hundred and forty. I wonder why he's called the Flying Star. One hundred. Hmm. That's that's over to you, Daniel. I'm sure you're watching over in Denmark. Please tell me why he's called the Flying Star, and we can use that possibly on Saturday. 100. Or indeed over the next couple of days if he fails to get the top spot. And darts is pretty big in Denmark 81. these days. They have the Nordic Darts Masters. It has been won by Peter Wright and Dimitri Vandenberg the last couple of years. But no, cast indeed, your mind one. back to that famous final between Michael Van Gerwen and Fallon Sherrick, where Sherrick took out Vandenberg with 100. one of the most Benjamin ridiculous comebacks you've ever seen. Fifty-six. One hundred. Sure, I mean, Douglas is feeling a little bit bereft after that last performance against Anton where he was drilled 4 0. It's not going to happen in this game. 94. He might even and be 2 0 up. 120. Maybe he named himself the Flying Star after that 114 average in the World Cup. 60. Because he was certainly flying. Benjamin, you require and he played 20. like a star. Makes sense to me. So does double 10 here. Game in the corner. The leg, Benjamin Drurus. Third you have leg, a favorite Mendoza Danish sports star or celebrity Game from years gone by? Ooh. 125. A little think about that. I've got a funny feeling that when I mention my favorite, 100. you're going to feel the same. 
Helena Christensen. Yeah. She was a very famous model and a photographer, funnily enough. But she was my favorite because she was in 100. that very famous music video with Chris Isaac, Wicked Game. Was that her? It was her. Famous black and white video, hey, one of the best music videos of the 90s. It was, yes. Beautiful. She transcended what she did, and she was actually the partner of Michael Hutchins for a while, the 85. late singer of NXS. Didn't know that. I would probably say, and this will not surprise you, but Mikhail Kessler. Yeah, I didn't think you were going to say Peter Schmeichel. <laughs> I have met Peter Michael. Very nice man. One hundred and nine. It's a family business goalkeeping. His yes. son Casper played for Leicester City when they won the FA Cup and the Premier League. One hundred. Benjamin, you require thirty-six. This is not for a very big save, but can he save the visit? Eighteen. Mendes, because he requires seventy-eight. Well, I didn't see that coming. How about double 12? Game shot on the third leg. Mindauskas, Sparowskas. That one leaves everybody a little bit speechless because we all thought it was going to be 2-1 to first. Benjamin. Game on. It is now 2-1 to the Lithuanian. I'm trying to dig a little bit deeper on the Fear star it. reference. And the Danish are famous for making stars at Christmas for their decorations. Six Don't know if that has any... Won't be long actually until we start seeing the old Christmas adverts, will we? You had Christ to go there, didn't you? Well, it tends to be sort of three months a year now, Christmas, doesn't it? What, December to February? I was thinking more oh, October to February. <laughs> I'm not really up on Lithuanian sports stars, if I'm honest. I'm going to have to do a bit more research. Be interesting to see. 95. The favourite of Mindaugas would be, it might even be Darius Labanauskas. 43. But I know that in countries like Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, they, they've, they've got a, a passion for some of the other sports that we don't necessarily follow in this part of Europe. I like a lot of handball and athletics and things like that. Yes. 83. Benjamin, you require 68. Things are very tight in this game. Sixty-four. Just like those two darts at double. Fifty-seven. All right, reliably and informed. Four. I like a bit of basketball over there as well. Yes, basketball's huge. Probably the most popular of all sports there. No score. Mendoza, oh, you require one He's on a 1-5-8 for 3-1. He's loitering at the minute. 58. Benjamin, you require Benjamin four. Benjamin is starting to miss doubles. This is very similar to what we saw yesterday. Two. Mendoza, you require 100. <coughs> oh, it's table pressure at the moment. Game oh, the wow, what a Mendoza's finish that is. Sparoskis. Second one of those we've seen today. Seen one a little earlier from Leighton Bennett. What did Mendoza's we say a couple of, a couple of games Game ago? On. What if Leighton Bennett beats Conor Heenahan? 100. What if Mindy beats Benjamin? Then Rhys Griffin just has to beat Ostland to win the group with a round to spare. Yep. We thought, there's a possibility, but we didn't think it would go like this. Borowskis is 100% on doubles in this game. And that's been his Achilles heel for well, two of the three days of Group A. He's technically four from four because he's hit two double tops. And all the while, Borowskis is 3-1 up, and he hasn't even hit a 140. 83. Wow.
99. Dart is hard. Zedrunus Zaviscus. Is that a name familiar with you? A strong man. 94. He was one of the world's strongest men. Doesn't ring a bell with me. It's 48 now. I'm more of a Magnus Fair, Magnus Magnus Fair 124. Yeah. He's from Iceland, right? He is. This is for the match. 87. Well, it's the first Benjamin time he's missed a double in the match. 44. And that's Benjamin off the hook. Was that on purpose? Game shot on the fifth leg. Doesn't matter anymore. He's still in the game. Just imagine if he was to get out of jail here. Heenahan right now is thinking, Benjamin come on, Rokers. Mindy. Game on. Yeah, Zavikas won the world's strongest man on four occasions. 100. I know that there was a, a very interesting argument recently between the 99 American sports media and their new 100 and 200 meter world champion Noah Lyles who said that winning the world athletics championship at 100 and 200 made him a world champion whereas 100. people like basketballers can't call themselves world champions in the NBA because it's only franchises from the states and one from Canada which is a really interesting argument. One but then they came back with, well, this is the elite of basketball and everybody from around the world comes to play here. Yep. So it's, it's an interesting 45. debate. Yeah, the Benjamin, cream Uruguay, of the sport 87. end up in the NBA, don't they? I think the NBA is a bit more cosmopolitan than, say, the NFL, which is predominantly American talent. 69. And people who win the Super Bowl still call themselves world champions which I don't agree with, even as a big NFL fan. 57. Benjamin, you require 18. For three apiece, just to hang in. 90. No score. You're off to the NFL soon, aren't you, mate? All being well. Didn't get to go to Pittsburgh to see Steelers Ravens last year. I was devastated. Benjamin, you require 18. Had tickets and everything. Now... I like this change of play, but it's got to go. Was he going for a six 15. or was he going for a ten? And that's because you were was he going 16. for a 16 or an eight in the previous leg? Mindy needs tops Game and shot. gets tops. And a match. Mindoskis, Baroskis. Well, this is not following the script. The first defeat of the day for Benjamin Drurius. And now he has to stay on 18 points and watch to see if Reese Griffin can win the group in the next game against Anton Usland. People need help from Anton, and they need it now.
And yes, you can scan your tickets for your chance to be here at Super Series Finals night. And that is where the race is intensifying here at the live lounge in Borsum. Well, as for Griffin, he may have thought he's in a little bit of a quagmire as far as progression is concerned. And he may not need his swan song to get himself through because if he gets the better of Anton Oslund here then he will move himself four points clear of the Dane and that will be enough right let's get into commentary and to Chris and to Paul if you'd have offered this opportunity to Reese Griffin at the start of the day he would have been rubbing his hands mm, the, the bit your hands off but now it's all in his hands he wants to make things easy on himself he has to dispatch Anton Osland in this best of seven leg game. Yeah, I don't think he really to well, throw first. Hey, game Anton's off. played today. I'm not sure he'd rather have to play to win the group. Anton or BDR, Benjamin. Sounds like a process in 16. Formula One, doesn't it? <laughs> BDR's been initiated. <laughs> But you're right about Anton. This is the best he's played this week. It may continue. And if it does, if he gets the win, we go to the last round, which would start with Heenahan against Borowskis, who's just 83. thrown his hat into the ring for Cat and Pigeonsville. Trying to predict these games today. 57. It's like well, trying to predict lottery numbers. In the last... In the last three games, we've had a, a three to one winner in Leighton against Steve Connor, Steve. and then a thirteen to eight winner in Mindy against Ben. <laughs> there is value out there if you can find it, but eighty four. I'm not sure I would have predicted Leighton to beat Connor. No oh, carnage in the European Tour qualifier as well as only three of the top eight seeds have gone into the next round. One hundred. Ross Smith, the number one seed, beating Luke Peters 6 4. Wadey beating Brian Maman, Roman 6 5. And Bunty just getting the better 99. of Jimi Hendrix 6 5. One hundred and forty. And nice set up there from Reese. This is never out of the question until he misses the treble, of course. We're always waiting 92. with bated breath to see what next, what finish he's going to get next. Yeah, he's had a host of big finishes. Forty. Oh, I just get the feeling that was Anthony interfered Uruguay, with. Forty-eight. Yeah, you could almost hear it. One or three. Yeah, you could hear it, couldn't you? Level sixteen. Is the Swede causing more problems? 32. Not yet. Race you require 20. Two fives. Too safe. Game Too good. The first leg, Reese Griffin. Now, they're the combination of visits you do not want to be stood behind. <laughs> Second leg, by a mile, miss by a mile. Game on. Miss, La last start miss you don't. Yeah. One of the reasons why some people just refuse to watch. Yep. 45. I re realised that a little bit too late. I'm just looking 57. at the grip of Reese Griffin as well. That middle finger portion is interesting me. You get the feeling the dart is resting on the inside of the fingertip. That's what I do. 100. Yeah, it's just sitting next to the nail, isn't it? Yeah, it just sits in there. 95. I found doing that stopped me breaking my wrist, which is something I was conscious of doing because it would take out the, the flick. 100. You can see from both of these players, there's a 68. lot of fluency with their action, but that wrist, whereas it does 
break slightly at the start for Anton to get into position. 100. After that, it doesn't do anything. No. Nope. It's just backwards and forwards. It's use of the elbow. Keep the elbow in the same position. Maintain a really good on your forearm vertical position and very little can go wrong. Ninety-five. This is not out of this leg yet. If he can put in a 140, he could pressurize. Should get one from here. 99. That's on your Trouble 15 for double eight. Aggressive. 45. Well, things have changed in that department because he's had some great doubling performances today. In his last win against Mendogas Barauskas, he was four from seven. Before that, Anton, you he was four from 16. eight. And he was three hits from four in his first game. So today, he's doubling supremely well. The That's a bit Anton better. Oslund. That improves none from four to one from five. Identical to Reese. Third leg, Reese to throw first. Game on. Can't ignore the fact that Reese is not scoring particularly heavily so far. It's got to change soon. Otherwise, he's going to be in the same boat as Benjamin 100. and Connor from round four. And then it will go to the last round of matches, maybe down to the very last game. There's probably people out there who looked 100. at round four and thought, well, Connor's going to beat Leighton, Benjamin's going to beat Mindy. Reese is going to beat Anton. And they might have put an accumulator on those three. Not only are all of those accumulators wrong, but they could be exactly the opposite. Yep. Remember to gamble responsibly today, everybody. Over 18s only. And be gambleaware.org for all the information that you need. Every big score that Anton hits will be felt on the stage and in the practice room. Merv King just picking up a very impressive win in the European Tour Qualifier. 6-3 win over Kuyvenhoven. Kuyvenhoven, 99-92. King, 100.29. Now, Merv King would love this tournament, wouldn't he? It'd be just like a normal practice 60. session for him. <laughs> Where things are going in the world rankings, there's a risk it might not be far off. Well, here's another one trying to hold on to his card. Speaking to him recently, he didn't seem too perturbed by whatever happens, but internally, I think he might be saying, you know, there, there are things that I still want to do. Yeah, but can you imagine him here and in the seniors? And on your requires 78. Frightening. So I've got to get a shift on next year in the seniors, Paul. It's getting harder and harder, yeah, isn't it? Again, he goes for bull on 78. Game on the third leg. And I'm not going to argue with him. Not when it works. <laughs> when it works, you're a genius. When it doesn't, you can look a Fourth bit foolish. To throw first. But we are seeing on. the people in the top three under pressure, bowing to the pressure. That average of Reese Griffin is exactly the same as it was at the start of leg three. It's not going up. Doesn't go up. He's not going to win because 140. Anton is averaging eighty-six point four, sixteen points more than Reese. One hundred and easiest looking one eighty. You will see Our referee there, Danny McNamara. It's not as if Anton is going all guns blazing today. He's just popping in a bit of a shotgun shell every now and again with a big finish, but it's predominantly very effective 100. 80s averages. Yep. With some very clinical finishing. 94. Reese started and this on game on top of the table on 20 points with the best leg difference of the top three at plus 14. Any loss in this game 
invites the other two in. Losing by a distance offers them even more. Another finish of over 100 to add to his collection. Fifth leg Reese to Throwford. That's our 11th of the day. He's probably got most of them. <laughs> well, he had a 1 2 1 and 1 3 8. 55. In match one, he's had a 1 6 4. A 110. 140. And another 124 hit there. That's five. Yeah. He's got half, yeah. effectively. 96. If he was to lose this game by four legs to one. Left it, himself work to do in the final game. Yeah, he's got a leg difference of plus 10, which is three behind Connor. 60. Only one in front of Benjamin. Every time you watch a, a movie or a, some sort of series, you can predict what's going to happen next. Sliding doors. <laughs> this is 100. not the case. I have no idea what's happening next. This has been one of the most unpredictable rounds of fixtures I can remember. Fifty. But he's let that one slip. He had a chance of getting a nice. Cushion there, did Anton. 100. For the first time in a little while, Reese is first to the finish. Don't be surprised if Anton leaves 1 5 2 and takes it out. And he's three from three since hitting his first double. 89. Oh. Reese require 150. 1 5 2 is a lot better than 1 6 2. Forty-six. Well, that's a slip. In boxing, a slip is good. In darts, it isn't. And he's going to need to slip. One hundred and thirty. Potentially a Major knockout punch and take out the one hundred and four. Well, if Anton had left one five two, he would have got a match dart. He's going to get match darts now. Thirty-seven. Anton, you require 30. Griffin has won his two games since losing to Conor Hinahan in game three, which we said was the biggest game of the group. It feels like they've all been big since then. Double eight. Game Osland, the, the ultimate Anton spoiler, Osland. has just caused carnage again in round four. All of the top three lose in round four, and it's one of the most unpredictable rounds I've ever seen. And that is the best performance of Anton's day with another big finish of 124 on the bullseye, which gave him the impetus. Well, we all take a breath now. And when we come back, it's the final round of matches. And your guess is as good as mine as to who's going to win this group.
Well, this is getting a little bit crazy now, isn't it? This race towards the line in Group A, because before the break, Reese Griffin was the latest of that triplet of players looking to win the group that was defeated in round four. So this is what we've seen so far. It's been a day full of moves, a day full of twists, and a day full of turns. This week, Wednesday has been the moving day at the Super Series. So one more round of matches for us to go. And this is how the table looks as we head into it. 14 games for everyone. Reese Griffin still leading the way on 20 points. It's still in his hands, and he takes on Benjamin Drew Roos in the final game of the session. Connor Heenahan is in action first up. Now he takes on Mindauskas Borowskis. I'm watching this one in the commentary box. It is Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. Final game of this group for Connor. Can he set the clubhouse lead? Because at the end of possibly seven legs in this contest, all he's going to be able to do is sit and wait. Sometimes that's a good thing, where other people will have the pressure of trying to topple your total. But as it stands, Connor's got 18 points, the best leg difference of anybody Does in the top mean, three. Does to throw Can it. he get game a on. win in his fifth game of the day? He couldn't on Monday, and he 100. was playing against Mindegaus Baraskas. So when he was done 4 0 in that game, Mace, we thought it was a bit of a shock. That Easy. can't happen again. No. Any win. And he eliminates Benjamin, doesn't 100. he? 100. Because he can't be caught. Because of the leg difference. Correct. Let the chips fall as they may. 60. So Benjamin will be cheering on. Baruskas. In this one. Bea yeah, Barouskas. Doesn't have the same ring as Bugard. Yeah. But... 95. I suppose Bea yeah, Barouskas is saying, yeah, I ain't playing in no group B, fool. <laughs> 55. I think Connor well, might be playing in group B if he doesn't get a move on. Got a switch. 99. 100. When we get the, the lineups for these weeks, it was fascinating the, the initial thought you have. Who's going to come through? Who's the favourite? Connor was the favourite. Definitively. 86. What's interesting is what is happening now. Bullseye for Mindy. 50. A leave of double 18. Oh, we'll have to do for now. Will he go bull? He needs 86. But only had two darts for it. 37. And does because you require 36. Is that a good guide or not? 27. I'm not sure it was. Connor, you require 56. Got to be sharp when you get these chances. It makes the double look a bit smaller. 16. And, and that is just a little nine. bit unfortunate. Caressing the wire twice on the wrong side. Game shot on the first leg. Mendelskis. And here it is. This will feel very familiar. Um, for Mendelskis. Second leg, Connor to throw first. One hundred. If Connor's not going to get through this group, how do you rate his chances in Group B? One hundred and forty. Yeah. Well, it could well be an absolute cracker, couldn't it? Yeah, Trina Gulliver, ten-time Ladies World Champions. There, Harry Gregory. I'm really looking, looking forward to watching him. Yep, same. Owen Bates. You know what you're going to get from one hundred. It'll be interesting to see what kind of form he's in coming into this. 100. Well, at least he's a... got the day off today. Yeah. After playing on the Pro Tour. Didn't have a particularly great Pro Tour by his 100. standards. He probably thinks of Pro Tour money this year as just pocket money because yeah. it's not something he should have had in the first place. 98. Mendoza's going to require 100. One of those I favour to get a tour card in 
January. 55. Honor you require 100. You can get it through the challenge to order of merit. He's currently fourth. Yep. Top two would give him a tour card. 100. And a spot Mendoza at the World Championship. Travel 18. 86 is definitely the number in this game so far. It's been left three times, 46. whether it be with three dots or two. 60. Doesn't like the single. Game there was nothing wrong with this. Yeah, he loved that, though. Seeing that, top's found. Third leg Mendoza's to How many Rovers. times have we seen Connor averaging in the 70s towards the end of a session? 70.63, zero from 10 on doubles at the end of Monday. 76.1, albeit beating Leighton Bennett yesterday. 100. What has he got to do to find more energy and more awareness and focus at the end of a session? Because let's face it, one of the reasons why he hasn't won a weekly title might be because of this issue. I wonder if he... He's getting enough 85. fluids and food and carbs and... You think about some of the things that tennis 16. players have to do. I, yep. I read Andre Agassi's book when he was coming towards the end of his career and he had a, a nutritionist who used to force feed him this hydration mix the night before he played a match in New York. And he said he would go through six or seven litres of it. 100. On your but point, just to hydrate the body the night before, he had to do it. Mm -hmm. The things you've got to do to get the best out of yourself. I was watching bits 78. of US Open from New York and the fluids. And obviously they're, they're losing a lot of fluids because of the ridiculous heat over there at the moment. Yeah, three different 85. drinks. Mm -hmm. Court On side. Your 58. Water. Something for electrolytes. Something for sugar. Game that is a 2-1 lead. He's Hino. turned it around to his credit. Taking his average up to, like Connor to nearly 83. How oh, we would love to get these two points. We said that there was a possibility that someone would win this group on 20 points, like last week. It might be Connor who does it. 100. Maybe Reese on 22. Or we may end up on... With three on 20. And it just being separated by big difference. It's a really weird scenario here in the final round as well, because we said that if Connor wins, he eliminates 100. Benjamin. And then he's got a game left without purpose. Yeah. But it's against the person who has to beat him to win, win. the group. Yeah. 60. Twenty-four. It's at this portion of the week, I'm sure, some of the players are beginning to fatigue. That's where recovery comes into play. Yesterday we heard from Reese Griffin on the balcony. He was talking about maximum rest and eating at a sensible hour. You have to do it again. Even bananas. Bit of potassium. 85. Mendoza's require 137. A protein you know, there's a shop right next door to us. I know. It's an 97. Eastern European shop. Require 120. I'm sure there's some things in there that Mendoza likes. It's the beautiful thing about living in such an international style community. 45. That if there are things that you need, 40. they're probably right there. No score. Close, but no cigar. Connor, you require Connor, 75. Dodge a bullet there. This is for 3-1. Double top. 35. Mendoza's you require Absolute 40. flyer. Yeah, that one was like Duplantis over the bar in the pole vault. Game shot of the fourth leg. That one's planted in the double 10 to make things a bit more awkward in the last two or three legs. 
Mindy's got his throwback. That sounds like, like a really Mendoza's good 70s movie. Throwfers. <laughs> Game on. One of them B movies. Like Stella getting a groove back. Got his groove back here. 140. Only two points in the averages so far. That's just a guide. 140. Whatever you've got left, give it now. Because of the points deficit, 81. a loss is not good enough. It would ensure that Connor would go to Group B with a loss. And then, effectively, what you've got in the last game is a shootout-style scenario. Yep. Because as it stands, and we'll get to this at one point, if it's relevant, Benjamin has won more legs than Reese. 57. So any win would be good enough for the Dane. 66. Yes. Can I require 164? Yes. Another. Leaves the ball. 120. You can't replicate what we saw from Anton Usland earlier. He has left. Double 18, and he will get a go. 98. For a break of throw. Can I require 36. And then the darts to win it. Got to go. 18. It doesn't. It does because you require He's 16. left very frustrated. Game shot More so play. because Mindoska's he's behind frozen. again. And now Mindy has got two chances Six late Connor or two to break first. Connor's heart. He started the day on top of the table. He started day two on the top of the table. It feels as if he's been top of the 42. table since the very first round. Did Sid there, Sid say about breaking his heart? It's a total eclipse of the darts. <laughs> 100. I wouldn't call it Bonnie. Anything but Bonnie. Although, what's happened here? Start with 42. 35. All of it was 35. Temperature might be lifting in the room here. Current climate in Portsmouth. 134. In his high 20s. 28 degrees here in Portsmouth. 45. And that will bring a little bit of extra temperature into the room, as well as the heat from the pressure. 96. But don't panic, folks. We're safe in our air-conditioned... Commentary box. It's currently a beautiful 18. 83. <laughs> I love how he said, don't panic. We're okay. <laughs> Connor's In okay as well. Connor, he, he has one leg left to survive. Okay, he must break Mindy. Seventh and final leg, Mendoza's to one of Thoroughfers. My pet hates when people Game on. mark themselves safe 6,000 miles from an earthquake or something. <laughs> I was flying over British Columbia recently and got an alert from the pilot. He said, look out of your right window, and that is what a Canadian wildfire looks like. That was a sobering moment. Yeah, I bet. 81. Now, here we go with mathematics at darts 101. 19s 96. first, get the 57, then you have to go for 18s. You don't go 20s. Nope. 81. Still half a dart ahead. He is going to get six darts from here. Three wins are possible today. 52. For Borowskis, who is gradually, day on day, getting better. And he's just getting more and more comfortable with the surroundings and the pressure that comes with it. Well, first and foremost, 
14. Got to be 19s. Got, it's it's 2.99. He did the wrong thing there. Then he's left 166. These are the kind of mistakes that you can't make. 78. And it's hard to learn how to do these things when your opponent is not in a finish and you think it's you're getting away with it. Yeah. I think you need to get punished a 16. few times before it. Mendoza because you require the penny 18. drops. Penny might be dropping for Connor. And that's not the right shot on 88. Not with three in hand. He's yeah. denied himself a dart at the ball. Connor for the match. 120. We've seen some skin savers this week. This will be up there. With the best of them. 80. Well, you imagine Mendoza, you he then went on 40. to win the group after taking that out. Double top. No score. Isn't found. Connor Hinehan clinging on like Sylvester Stallone in Cliffhanger. And Eight wins shot. the match. The match Connor Hinehan. So there it is. He sets the clubhouse lead of 20 points and a leg difference of plus 14. He can do no more. He'll have to wait to see what happens in game 15. But that, that effectively eliminates Benjamin Drurius. It's now a two-horse race. So Mindegos Barauskas, he's going to be in Group C. Conor Heenahan, we'll have to wait and see where he goes the next couple of days. And so now it is just a two-horse race to see who is going to get through Group A because that full fee victory for Conor Hinehan has eliminated Benjamin Drew Roos from contention. We're going to see him in the final game against Rhys Griffin who needs to pick up the points if he is to make his way through to the finale on Saturday night. Next up for us, it is a final game for Leighton Bennett in Group A. He's taken on Anton Uslan, the Swede, who has made a bit of a mash as far as Group A is concerned. He's part of the reason why we've got this drama to the line. Uh, let's see how this one goes with Paul and Chris. Yes, Henry, you're absolutely right, because not just First Anton, Anton today, to but Thoreau. Leighton has done his Game bit off. as well. He's got himself a win. And that was in round number four. The fact that he beat Connor Heenahan. 60. Gave Connor a headache or two, but now he's provided his own tonic. But it's still a case where the hangover of the last couple of days 
But Connor could come back and bite him because he is now a firm, firm fan of fellow Scandinavian of Anton. 97. This has been one of the most up and down third days of a week that I can remember, Mace. Yep, yeah, and it's not over yet. <laughs> this is almost like the 100. the pre-game or the undercard of yeah. the main event. The hors d'oeuvre. Although, nice for these two guys to have one more run out before 140. the reset mentality going in tomorrow where they start off all on zero points, have the advantage of having three days of hockey time in preparation for Group C. It's a little bit of a later start, one o'clock, so that's a benefit to the players. They get a chance to have a... Good bit of rest before tomorrow. Anton would like to continue playing today, I should imagine. I wouldn't be surprised. He wins this match. He's going to be the player of the day. Bullseye. Oh, oh, oh. Vintage Leighton Bennett. You don't say that about a 17-year-old very often. Well, that's the kind of stuff he used to do all the time. And a fabulous smile like to boot. To wonderful, wonderful finish. I was just going to say before the end of that leg, I wonder if Leighton's made some friends this week. Sometimes when you're surrounded by some new people, they can have such a profound effect on you. Absolutely. He enjoyed that. Really happy for the kid because he's been put through the mill a bit this week. And yeah, he's gone through the ringer. and it, it, Huge pressure on young shoulders. And I think he's conducted himself really well because when you consider his natural brand of the sport is pretty much all guns blazing all the time. He might be finding out some other strengths in his game. Yeah, but he's he's had to just knuckle down and one hundred and forty take the blows. And when you're on the canvas and somebody's still allowed to hit you like they are in mixed 55. martial arts, that's what he must feel like. Yeah, you you just look up and you think, well, that this hurts, <laughs> but I'm still here. I'm still conscious. I'm still able to win. It's a bit like when 100. Khabib was... He was in a chokehold, wasn't he? He got out and he won. Yeah. Remember what he said about 60. that fight afterwards? Your he said, there's no way I was tapping in front of my father. That was such a strong statement. He can't replicate, replicate the 161. 91. Oh, down to 70. And that's not a gimme. This is much better. Everything about his throw. 130 improved. And on your requires 70. So good to see. I'm sure he can feel as... 30. You know, he'd be disappointed results-wise, but on reflection, maybe watch this back today or this evening over a bit of dinner and he will see the... Improvements. Double 16. 18. Doesn't double the lead, but... And on your when you are looking 32. to get to a certain destination, you have to navigate the journey first. Game shot of second one. leg, Anton Ostlund. This is a really fair match at the minute to see where Leighton stands at the end of a campaign. He might need... To be really Early good at the end of a day first. to find Game his way into the top two in Group C over the next couple of afternoons. And he is going to be playing against Anton the next couple of days. So imagine if he's struck up a friendship 57. with this young man from Sweden. He'll be looking forward to seeing him tomorrow. Yep. Having said that, he, it could be exactly the opposite. He might not 96. want to see him again because he's beaten him twice already this week. It works both ways. But we've talked a lot about Leighton. 100. One thing Anton has done the last couple of days is impress us in very big flashes. But today he really 77. has, amongst the pressure of the top three, shown what he can do. If on a day like today he can be the MVP, 
60. That will say something. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been really impressive today, hasn't he? Ninety-six. The opening game, of course, but by the narrowest of margins, but. Amongst that defeat, he was three out of four on the doubles, had finishes of 1 2 1 and 1 3 8. Since then, 59. he's had wins over Connor Heenahan. A 4 0 win over Baraskas. Or again, impressive four out of seven on the finishes and a ton pluser. And then. A win over Reese with a 92.19 and 4 out of 9 on the doubles. Leighton Yorkwarn, 92. His finishing today will make pretty reading tomorrow afternoon when we bring you all the numbers. 76. That was pretty Anton as well. However, this is a finish that Anton hasn't got this week yet. One of the few ones. He's not going to add to his collection. 40. Well, I'm not sure if anybody's done that yet, if they've gone the full 160 plus for the week. Got all five? I'd say so. Well, how does he find that? No I don't think that could be hit with the way he throws the dart, because it just flies. It veers left. It would have to be Micron perfect. 102. Leighton Yorkwarn is not millimetre perfect there. But Leighton is. Break of throw. Here's a blast from the past. This is a qualifying game at Euro Tour 13 qualifiers. Fourth James Leighton Wade against Richie Brunet. I believe they went on the same tour to Australia oh, back in 2007. No. The William Cross Pro Am. You know, you were talking about dart shirts earlier. My friend no, Tommy Highland, so. who lives in Victoria, great guy. Irish, but has a Liverpool accent. Wayne Mardle was supposed to go on that tour. 59. He couldn't go because I don't think he was very well. But he'd already had a shirt made. Tommy got the shirt. So he has a one-off one Wayne Mardell shirt. And it's one of his prized possessions. So if you're a dart shirt collector out there and you're thinking of one-off type shirts, that's one of the best ones. 94. 41. It just so happens that leaving a bogey number there is not going to bite Leighton. I know what's encouraging, though. 84. That is encouraging. Very. And if he does watch this back, just keep doing what you've been doing today. Late in your war, 84. I can actually say that about both of them. Anton, very smart in the background, taking a towel on stage, and I get the feeling that the message is to 12. everybody who plays here this week, Anton, do the same. 42. You're going to need it. Yes, you're going to need to mop that brow. Game shot on the fourth leg, Anton Oslin. Punish there for a ragged end to the leg. He was on... On 84, leg, Anton and chose to, to go 16s, and he's been Game fairly efficient on the treble 20s today and in this specific game. And I think the treble 20, double 12 may have been the better option. 60. 60. But the nerves are jangling a little bit in the practice room right now for both Connor and for Reese. 100. When you are going into a, a match like 59. that, it's just typical that the game before just goes on a little bit longer. Yeah. 
The waiting is the worst part. One hundred and nine. Clean and smooth that final dart release was. Oh yeah, because we talked about it, didn't we? About twenty-four hours ago, how it was a bit twisty and a bit violent. That 16. had placement all over it. Yeah, exactly that. Perfectly put. Perfectly placed. Forty. Twenty-four hours ago, the people in Group C probably thought. I'm looking at that guy with four points in mind. I think they're thinking something different yeah. now. Not now. 80. Well, that's the risk when you throw such an upright angle. Sometimes you catch the flight before you catch the board. 138. Well, it's just the control... I'm impressed with it at the moment. He's on course for a best performance of the week. 180. Leading you require 40. That is a fifth 180 of this game. Yes, five. Game shot of the fifth. And that is a fifth leg like completed. Both averaging over 92. Leighton breaks the throw. Six leg Leighton to He's three perfect. from eight on the doubles. There is a Game lot one. to admire about this. Scoring, excellent. Doubles, very good. Big checkout in there as well. And a third max. Six in the game. We're in leg six. The uneducated darts mind would probably say, well, where's this been? 80. The way you've got to look at it, is he's been playing and building up to doing this. Now it's about remembering what he's doing right. 45. Going to be a bumpy road towards Saturday night, that's for sure, for someone. Six names have got to go there. And only one will remain. 131. Who is going to join Matt Clark, Daryl Pilgrim, Marino McKells, and Conan Whitehead? <clears throat> One wow. That is number seven. Averaging over 96 now, and he's got 96 left. That's the way he can to... barely take the smile off his face. 58. Smiling Three works. 96. Double 18. Game Welcome back, Leighton. Stunning performance. One of the best of the entire week. And even Anton, who was having the day of his Motor Super Series life, well, they're going to meet again over the next couple of days, but you're going to leave a group with a smile and go into a different group. That's the way to do it. A 1-6-1 finish, 40% on the doubles, and 96 to take the match and his best average of the week by a good five points as well. We will look at him with very different eyes over the next couple of days, but we're going to look at the last game of the group with very different eyes. It's all about Reese. Can he find his way through by beating Benjamin Jurius?
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where that was a little bit of a fun game before the break, letting Bennett get in the better of Anton Oslin by four legs to two. But the series business begins here and now because the final game of the group is going to dictate who the winner of it will be. There's two players on the hockey, but there's three men in the equation. Reese Griffin for him, victory, and he is in to Saturday night's finale. As for Benjamin Drew Roos, if he can pick the points up while well, he sends Conor Heenahan into the Saturday night affair. So then let's see how this is going to pan out in the company of our commentary team. It is Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. Thank you, Henry. Yes, a win for Benjamin. And it's Connor that wins Group A and straight through to Saturday night. A win for Reese, And he wins. First leg, Benjamin's Group A. Rovers. Game on. Benjamin cannot win Group A with a win because if he won 4-0, for example, he would join... Reese and Connor on 20 points, but could only get to plus 13 on leg difference, whilst Connor, whose race is run, is on plus 14. 140. Still the clubhouse leader. <laughs> Three players on 20 points could happen. Doesn't get any closer than that. 97. Well, the, the wins today for the players, it, it's incredible reading, isn't it? It's really been shared across the board. It genuinely has. Now, here's, here's the scenario. If Griffin wins this game, you've got three players who have won three games and three players who have won two games. You don't get a day tighter than that. Already, Griffin has been put on the back foot. 41. Benjamin, you require 84. And what makes it harder is he's got to break Benjamin in this match. Maybe even twice. Well, what, what's harder for him is he's playing against a player who... 76. It, it doesn't math, matter to him. It's it's irrelevant to him in terms of where he ends up. Can't win the group. Can't lose a spot in Group 41. B. 41. Benjamin, you require eight. Double four. Nudged. Double one. Game shot in. first leg, Benjamin through. That was a fairly aggressive try when you consider the fact that his opponent was not on a finish. So Second first blood to, to the Dan. First. Game on. 15 darts will get it done most of the time in this group. Get it done most of the time anywhere. 100. Especially on throw. You wonder what kind of setback it would be for somebody like Connor or Reese, not to get through this group? Would it have some sort of feed-on effect to their efforts in the next couple of days? We don't know about that yet. It's just speculation. 91. We've just seen what Leighton Bennett's done. He's put in his best performance with his 15th game of the week, but he wasn't under the same kind of pressure 57. as Reese or indeed Connor. No, he's just under the, the pressure he puts on himself. To perform, having for so many years as ninety-five, a very young player, producing some mind-boggling darts. Well, his performance last time out was very, very impressive. You might have been watching the last couple of days to see what the record is like for Ooh, these two against each other. Of course, it's one-one. Trying to separate people this week. We need pliers. 39. A crowbar. Hadron Collider. <laughs> 98. Good riposte here from Reese. Just a little bit of a disturbance in play. Just waiting for. Things to settle down. They can only progress when the scores are correct. This is a test of your patience. Benjamin's last score was 39. Well, I think he scored 39, Nico. Now that's Benjamin what Danny McNamara was just saying. So we are going to go back to the stage now to see... Conclusion of leg two. 
134. Test of patience passed. Yeah, there's a, a lot of technology involved, and for those of you that even use the most simple of technology, Benjamin, you require 36. Can sometimes throw a little bit of a wobbler. Game that means means Benjamin that Reese now does have to break him twice. Third leg, Benjamin. He's been knocking on the door Game on. all day long, and it feels like nobody's been home. Eighty-seven. As far as trying to break Benjamin Drew Roos today, it's like trying to break an ice cube with a feather. It's just not going to happen. It's going to have to be some of the A-grade Reese Griffin stuff that we saw in the first two rounds yesterday. If he is going to come through this challenge. 60. Oh, well, looking at who's going to qualify from Group A. Qualifying in European Tour 13. 58. First man through, Steve Lennon with 103.45. 6 2 win against Callum Goffin. Well done, Len. Yeah, he needed that. 140. He's another dark player who's grown a beard. He might be good pals with 95. Kino. Might be a good day for those lads. James Wade through with 105.23. 6 3 against Richie Burnett, who had a 96 36. This has got to be big. It's big enough to get in touch. It's like he's either a dart or a visit behind at the minute. Benjamin is cruising. Oh, and you... Ooh. 120. Well, the rare times you do see Three the double 17. And he is a throw behind when you look at the averages, Nico. He has 13 between them. 131. Now, make your mind up time. 34. Good choice. Game Fine hit. 3 0 Benjamin, Benjamin. And right now, there might be a smile on the face of Connor Heenahan because if it's not four legs in a row for Reese, it's Group B for him. Game on. Maximum. Four legs remain. And for Reese to progress to Saturday night's final and avoid Group B, he's got to win them all. At the moment, Benjamin averaging one into the 90s with a second max. Looking like he will not be denied. 41. And we are going to see three players all on 20 points separated just by leg difference. Ultimately, 45. Is Reese going to be Punished after losing 4 1 to Anton. 50 match number 12 today. That one defeat may be the difference. 135. Benjamin, right now, has all the time in the world for the 1 4 1. Benjamin, you require 141. One hundred and five. Forty five. Benjamin, you require thirty six. Zero pressure. Game and shot. finds the target and, Benjamin and the Bruce. most comprehensive of victories for Benjamin, winning four legs to nil with a 93-94 average. Couple of 180s in there, tidy enough finishing, 40% four from 10, but a real disappointing end to his campaign. So just to confirm, Conor Hinehan.
He wins Group A. He gets Thursday and Friday off. He's straight through to Saturday night's final. Benjamin Reese into tomorrow evening's Group B into tomorrow afternoon is Anton Boruskas and Bennett. Let's join Paul and Henry for some final thoughts on today's Group A. Chris, thank you very much indeed. Well, I think I've rethought what I was going to say to you up here about five times today. But in the end, Conor Heenahan getting through. Reese is going to be obviously disappointed with that last one. Of course he is. He found himself in uh, a very attacking position uh, when it came to uh, that last round of, of fixtures. Obviously, it didn't go his way. But I think you should be very happy with the way that he, he challenged in the end. It's always difficult when you are in a position to succeed and you don't. But be proud of the fact that you got close. And now there's another challenge coming up. And it is, it's more doable, let's put it that way, because it's now three spots in Group B over the next couple of nights. You're seeking a lot of advice from people for playing in this competition. But can you almost not know what it's like until you put in that type of scenario? That's sport. In fact, that's life. You've got to put yourself under these pressure situations to grow and to blossom into the player that you... Uh, are going to become but ultimately I think if you don't put yourself under pressure you're not going to figure out what it's all about in the end well let's have a look then at the results from today's action 15 games littered with drama littered with pretty much anything and everything and as you can see there everything twisted everything turned and nothing was decided up until the very very last and Reese Griffin well he had not just one but it was two opportunities wasn't it because if he got the better of Anton there he would have won the group yeah that's going to put an extra bit of salt in the wound unfortunately but sometimes we have seen people progress through group A or B or C situations when it hasn't been in their hands or indeed I remember even Matthew Edgar once was in a really commanding position in group C in Southampton and he lost his last two games had he won one of those he would have gone through it does happen now and again Today, it's easy for me to say this, but it's one of the most thrilling Wednesdays I've seen because that fourth round where all of the top three lost, we were just sitting back in our chairs in the commentary box thinking, you can't predict this, and that makes for great drama. Well, let's round up the story of the day then because the victory we thought may have sealed it for Griffin was against Leighton Bennett, who himself had a much an improvement today than he did on the previous couple of games. We can see Reese take out this 110 to get the better of him. And in moments like this, this is when you thought that the tide was going to turn. Yeah, I think so. When you, when you can do that in a last leg decider, you think to yourself, there's nothing that's going to stop me today. But that's the beauty of this format. You might win that match, but the next match comes along in maybe 20 minutes, an hour's time. A lot can happen within 20 or 60 minutes. And mentalities change, pressures change, temperatures change. It's a battle for the fittest, and it's more of a marathon than a sprint. As far as Leighton Bennett is concerned, again, treating us to some good performances and good finishing. But the one thing I don't know about you, I've been most impressed with has been his temper. Is it? Because we've seen players with vast more experience lose it under this kind of pressure when results don't go their way. But the way he's managed to keep it all together for such a young man, he's got to take a lot of compliments on that. Yeah, I get the feeling that he's either got a, an older head on young shoulders these days or he's starting to learn what he needs to do to get back to where he wants to be. And... As far as the way he's conducted himself the last three days, I applaud him. Secondly, I love the way he has either taken advice from somebody else or listened to what me and Chris were saying in commentary about his rhythm, because today he was head and shoulders above what he was doing the last couple of days. And the smile on his face when he beat Anton there. And if you look at the way that Anton congratulated him as well, that was classy. That was a great performance and that will definitely help him tomorrow afternoon. As far as Anton Osland is concerned, we knew that there were signs in the locker. He certainly showed it today, and ultimately, he's kind of sealed all this. Yeah, he's a good player. I think we all know it. The, the signs are there. The big finishes were, were very flashy. But today, with three wins from a possible five, there's definitely a possibility of him uh, cooking the rest of the crew in, uh, in Group C. I think he's, he's definitely one to watch. 
We're at the midway point of our week now. Three days of six has been completed. And this is how the tournament bracket is going to work out for the next couple of days. Connor Heenahan has got a couple of days off. He's the winner of Group A. And we can now have a look at the breakdowns of Group B and C. And tomorrow night, we've got one of the most exciting young talents in the sport, Greater Super Series stage. Owen Bates is going to be here alongside a 10-time world champion in Trina Gulliver. Harry Gregory is going to join us as well. Benjamin Drew Roos and Reese Griffin of Obviously, will drop down from Group B. As far as Group C is concerned, that's going to be our focus and the centre of attention on Thursday and Friday afternoon. Joe Croft's going to be our ADC qualifier, and he's going to be joined by David Vazutsky and Ryan Harrington alongside our three Group A players to make up that particular group. Now, you might have been wondering why we haven't been talking about Conor Heenahan yet, because why don't we get straight to talking to the man himself? Conor, many congratulations. Back here again after a successful Group A campaign, but... Tell you what, you made a bit of hard work of it in the end, didn't you? Yeah, uh, I don't know how I got through there, but thankfully I did. Uh, uh, I was there was a bit of luck in the end, but I think over the first two days I had a good lead, or not a lead, but uh, as in a good foundation. So it helped me today because I didn't really play well today. I, I don't know how I got through, to be honest, but I'm happy. After I'll take it. After that first game against Reese, and then you lose a couple after that, did you just feel like everyone was chipping away and chipping away and chipping away at you? Yeah, geez. everyone seemed to play really well, but I didn't seem to do anything. After I bet Reese, maybe I thought I'd had it done then, because like, me and Reese were at the top, but uh, I shouldn't be thinking that. I'm too experienced now to be thinking that, that kind of thing, but I'm glad I got over the line and then I'm happy. I have two days rest, I can relax. It's I don't think I've won one of these for a good while, or a, a group, so I'm happy to get over this now. So. As far as today's concerned, after those couple of defeats, was there a point where you thought, this is it, chance gone, going back tomorrow night? Yeah, when, once I lost it late and I thought I was tomorrow night, and then usually I do play well on Thursdays and Friday nights, so I, I, I didn't mind. Like, my goal to start of the week was to get into the Thursday night. If you finish in the top three, you're, you're doing well. So, but to get over the line first time around, it's good, to, so I'm happy. So back into tomorrow night, and I think you know the question I'm about to ask you now because we asked the question a couple of times. You've come so close on so many occasions here at the Super Series. How much would you like to make it third time lucky here at the Live Lounge? Yeah, I, I don't know how to say it. I think it's about time that I should get over the line, but it's never easy. Like There's so many good players in it. I just need to take one game at a time, and once I get to that, stage again hopefully just get over the line and play this the well uh, like i can play really really well here i know i can i've done it before so to, to just do it on the night is the main thing that's it so what's the plan then now between now and and saturday lovely weather out here in portsmouth what's the plan just rest and recuperate for a couple of days yeah rest up i, I have to do a few runs i have football i'm missing a few football training sessions so i have to do a few runs for them so that's I'd be running around, I suppose, I don't know. <laughs> <We> <laughs> Stay off the drink for a while. <laughs> <laughs> we you gave everybody else the run around in Group 8, that is for sure. Connor, many, many congratulations. We'll see you on Saturday night. Thanks to Paul, thanks to Chris, thanks to you for your company, wherever you're joining us at home. Uh, well, we're going to be back tomorrow afternoon, 1 o'clock, the action begins on the Super Series YouTube channel. Then we're going to be joining our viewers on Sporty Stuff TV from 3 o'clock. But as far as Group A is concerned, Connor Heenahan, He's the man. Thank you.